All right, uh, good morning. I am here with, who knows, maybe it's the last experiment for this archetype. Maybe there will be more. There will probably be more. Um, so uh, this variant, uh, Chalice of the Void, is has always been a very disruptive card. Uh, modern is a format where people are trying to play low curves. Uh, there's lots of powerful one mana card selection cards. And by playing Chalice of the Void, you can kind of wreck everyone else who's doing that or like severely disrupt them. And then, like, Nature's Claim is one of the most popular sideboard cards against artifacts. And since we know, like, this deck is going to draw a pretty high number of Nature's Claims. Chalice also kind of answers some of those post-board answers we're expecting. Uh, the consequences of playing Chalice of the Void is that we're playing no one mana cost ourselves, so this version has no Faithless Looting, which I'm pretty keen on. Without Faithless Looting, there's no reason to play red, so uh, this build of the deck is just straight blue-black. Even though I like Spellskite more than Welding Jar, uh, I do think here that we would have way too many two drops if we were playing the spell skates main. And the Welling Jars give us a chance to, like, a better chance of turning on Mox Opal on turn one so that we can Chalice of the Void on turn one. Uh, one consideration is to play Gemstone Caverns, but I think without more card draw on the deck, these Inventor's Fairs are even more important. Um, like, it's even possible that a third Inventor's Fair is the right way to go without, like, a one-mana draw spell. Uh, and the card that I'm the most interested in that I'm not playing here is Ideas Unbound, which is, like, blue-blue, draw three cards at your next end step, discard three cards. I feel like taking out the one-mana draw spell means that it's possible the deck wants to play some more, you know, slightly more expensive draw spell. But that's as similar as possible to Faithless Looting, and it can be a really great top deck. So I'm going to just take this for take this for a little drive through a competitive league. My intuition is that, you know, uh, having Thopter Chalice. Uh, having like Losing Faithful Looting decreases the power of our deck, and it's just a question of like how much the power of other decks will be decreased. I think um, you know decks like Humans and Spirits that weren't playing a lot of one mana spells, or like that just play their like one mana creature on turn one, and then don't necessarily have more. Uh, this is gonna be like a big downgrade, but I feel against decks like Control decks. Um, Lightning Bolt decks, um, Ancient Stirrings decks, like especially the ones with all the eggs. Oh, hey. Um, adding cardboard live to my stream. Yeah, you can suggest that. And actually, I'm sorry, I need to export this deck list to Stream Decker. Uh, Jarvis, tell me why, what the advantages are of adding cardboard live. Uh, okay, I'll export this deck list. And then put it on the stream decker. Save. Yes. Okay. Uh, Fitch5000, hey, I watched a bunch of your reruns this weekend. What do you think, Fitch? Good quality reruns? You have any like ideas inspired by watching them? I'm going to Stream Decker, and I'm uploading the stack. Uh, Thopter Chalice. Okay, it says current. Okay. Back to you, chat. Uh, so now, whether you're, I don't know, there's a Stream Decker link somewhere. And if you click on it, you should get the current deck list. Um, okay. 
this hand, two lands, bobble. And we need another land to get to bridge, but I think I think this is a, a keep. Uh, it's an extension that's a work in progress by a good friend of mine. They're currently using an SCG now, it's similar to Stream Decker, but they're going to add more stuff. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out during my next downtime. Uh, Fitch, you loved it. I like how you're trying new things every week. I'm surprised to see you cutting looting. It seems like... Yeah, so like... I don't want to cut looting. Like, I think looting's amazing in the deck. Like, I think looting is the, the biggest breakthrough possible for, like, Thopter Sword style decks. Uh, but, like, I think part of, like, experimenting is, like, you know, k killing your, your best cards to try something else. And, uh, like, I think Chalice is, like, a good enough card. And we see it in the, like, the Grixis War decks, or I guess they call themselves, like, Salt Prison um, decks. And so... If it's working well for them, I feel like it's worth checking out to see if it can do something for us. Um, like, I think maybe the next iteration, if this it seems good, but it seems like it's missing some card draw power, is, you know, figuring out a couple cards that seem weak, like maybe we don't need the fourth Chalice, or like the fourth Sorcerer's Spyglass, and getting some Ideas Unbound in here. Since Ideas Unbound is a lot like looting, you know, it's obviously not the same. Uh, but yeah, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I like. I think that you know, if you have a tournament coming up in the next like week or two, I think they're really good arguments. Or like, I don't know, you're just trying to like grind for tickets or whatever. They're really good arguments for um, you know choosing a list and just like learning exactly how to use it. But I feel like you know if your stakes are low, um, I think it's really important to just keep experimenting, like, you know, that's how you find technology that other people don't find. Uh, so this is probably like a thing in the ice deck, and, oh no, Storm, okay. So we know it's Storm, these bobble, like, we don't really care about our ensnaring bridge size, since they can just as easily kill us with Grape Shot. What we really need is a Damping Sphere. So when I look at my top deck, I'm kind of looking to see if I have blue sources coming for this Whirr, since I really wanted Whirr for Damping Sphere. And there's Spyglasses and King Hell. Uh, I think I'll wait on the, this one bobble. Like, um, there's the tension between having enough permanence in play, where if I find... If I find the mana source I need... Let's see, I guess... I can still work successfully. We have the Witch Bane Orm in hand. Let's see, Gifts, Manmorphose, Reef. So I think we still name like Scalding Tarn. I don't really have anything else that they sacrifice. And. Bactala, I will take your free money. They don't play Tarns. Okay. So there's literally nothing worth naming and. It doesn't matter. Um, Bactala, I super appreciate you uh, giving me your free Amazon money. One third of the storm must play Tarn. Shivan Reef indicates no Tarn, though. Got it. All right, so I think if we sacrifice this bobble, we still have one permanent in play. We'll play another Spyglass. Yeah, we're just not going to get blue sources fast enough. So we're just looking to make sure that we make our land drops so we can get up to this Witchbane Orb. Main deck, they tend not to have any answers to Witchbane Orb. Sithril! Wow, another Twitch Prime subscription. Super appreciate it. Sithril. At some point here, I'm going to add some fancy graphics, or you know, so that subscribers get emotes. I don't know how important that is to anybody, but it seems like a, a fun thing to do. Um, perhaps we've lost our opponent here. Oh no! All right. So 
So, right, they're probably just waiting till the last possible moment before they have to even try to go off. They're going to gifts at the end of our next turn. We're not really going to be able to have this Witchbane Orb in play by then. Uh, if we get another land, in theory, we can put this ensnaring bridge down, but no. So, all right, we drew the chalice, which is kind of our experiment for the day. And, you know, clearly they're going to respond by probably, like, opting a bunch, since those ops are all going to be dead in a second. And this card should make it pretty hard for them to go off. You know, I haven't Chalice that many Storm players since I haven't been playing a build with Chalice, but this seems like a place where it's supposed to be great. Um, yeah, I guess they're probably having to decide whether, like, just to accept these Ops as dead cards and use their gifts, like, use their mana efficiently. So that's one opt. And of course, like, once they're going off, they can still cast those opts to increase their storm count. They're just not going to resolve. So the fact that we didn't draw land is going to make it very hard for this bridge to stop like even a small number of goblins. So we're, we're leaning pretty heavily on this Chalice this game. Chalice on two shuts them off completely. Uh, that sounds true. Chalice on two is pretty rough for us, but if they've drawn more cards, we can win on decking. Or if we have a Thopter Foundry already in play, you know, we don't really need any other cards. So when you guys are saying Chalice on 2 beats them, you still like Chalice on 1 here, right? Like, I think if we don't Chalice on 1 that turn, very high odds we're just dead. Yeah, okay. Yeah, my hand, right. Literally nothing going on here besides this Chalice. I have to watch Brow, that legendary creature, every time a spell is countered, they get a loot. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, I think this hand also showcases some of the vulnerabilities of not having a Faithless Looting type card, right? Like, Chalice is basically occupying the Faithless Looting spot. Obviously we're winning here because it's Chalice, and we're not dying here. Uh, but if it was looting, we would have been able to, like, draw two, discard two, and probably hit, like, two more lands, and sculpts the, the casting costs of the sand. Um, whenever a spell or ability you control counters a spell. Yeah. Alright Jarvis, good call on interactions with Baral. So my guess here is they're just Setting up a small storm of goblins. Like, I don't think they're going to get a storm count high enough to kill us. So we're really going to need to draw like a land for bridge. And then another land to be able to whir for ensnaring or a uh, bottled cloister. I think with a higher casting cost, Ball of Cloister goes from being a, like, nice to have in the deck to, like, mandatory to have main deck. Like, I think with changing from Pithing Needle to Spyglass, like, the curve is just increased that ever so slight bit that makes it so that, like, you must have Ball of Cloister. RTFC is read the fucking card. It's um, 
Right, so often people think that they know what a card says. <laughs> my, uh, my most recent RTFC moment was, uh, like, I've been playing with Nahiri for a couple of days as, uh, you know, experimenting with a Jeskai build. And um, right, everyone just uses Emrakul as the win condition for Nahiri. So I was like, eh, I guess I need to throw an Emrakul in. And, uh, you know, I had, like, an Nahiri at, like, 10 or 12 counters, but I didn't Snaring Bridge out, so I just wasn't using her ultimate. I was just, you know, uh, sifting through my cards. And uh, one of the people on the stream was like, why don't you ultimate Nahiri and, like, go go infinite? Because I had, like, a KCI and a Sword of the Meek in play, and I was just missing a Thopter Foundry. I was like, you know, what do you mean? Like, how do we go infinite here? And they're like, Nahiri can also get artifacts. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, RTFC, always. Um, yeah, RTFM from programming is pretty good, too. Oh, that's sick. I didn't realize, uh, he'd spoiled me here. What, uh, alright. So, gifts package, if six mana... Our goal is just to make this as expensive as possible for them. They don't have blue mana, so they can't cast this remand. The remand can make things difficult for us on subsequent turns. So I think actually binning the remand is a good idea. The ritual is only worth the mana. I'm dead. All right. They're just grape shot into grape shot. They get ritual shot. Passing flames, sure. Alright, I'll take your word for it. Chalice did not get the job done. Yeah, it sounded like 7, 14, 28, yeah. It is ex a lot like 30 damage. Alright, so this is one of those matchups where, like, Thopter Foundry is just way slow compared to their combo. So we want these slots to do interactive things. Uh, like, and then we'll just change to Tezzer being our win condition. Spy class really doesn't do a lot here. They often board out their graveyard stuff, but we never know for sure, so we'll bring the cage in. Uh, they're going to be playing, like, Echoing, Truth, and a Braid. So we want these spell skites and these unward egos. And then Liliana is a card that I'm trying out. A lot of people on the forums say that Liliana is a, a fine win con. Jeff says that when Stormcast gifts with three red, they automatically win. Alright, it's a good good metric to have in mind. Um so I think this seems right. Trip Orb doesn't really do anything against them. And, you know, these ensnaring bridges, sometimes they go for goblins, so it seems like it should be good. Alright. Ready for battle. Ultra Mega Dead. Yeah. Professional magic player term. So... Um, Dan Duterte here, like, his, uh, his technical term is Dunzo. Like, you could have lost a round and then you have just lost, but, like, when you're knocked out of the tournament, you are now Dunzo. <laughs> um, alright, we'll play first. So, this hand... After this cage turns off past in flames... Spell Skite. It's just going to stop them from abrading it or echoing truthing it. I don't know how good Liliana is against them. I think, Li yeah, I think Liliana is supposed to be very good. And the Witchbane Orb uh, makes it so that they can't go off without finding a disruption spell, which means that like Liliana attacking their hands can be really aggressive. Yeah, that seems right to me, Jarvis. Uh, when you say new cards, Fitch, which new cards are you talking about? Right, so like, 
yeah, Liliana discarding their hand isn't a, as big of a deal without the cage kind of making sure all those cards stay gone. Lavina Zorius Renegade. I have not seen. I guess I have not seen the new cards. It has uh, has the Ravnica spoiler season started? I guess I must have. Yeah, uh, I think my mind's mostly split between modern and ultimate masters. Um, basically, all the time I'm not actually playing on here, like on stream, I'm uh, I'm playing ultimate masters right now. The set is, I think, really sweet. Like, uh, I thought. Like, the games actually go fairly long, like, a lot of the decks are very interactive, and you just get to do all these ridiculous graveyard things that are super fun. Um, I think Simic Ascendancy is going to be used in the Hardened Scales deck. What does uh, Simic Ascendancy do? You got 13th in the MTGO RPTQ when top 12 qualified. That's brutal, Jarvis, I'm sorry. Was that bad tie breaks? Alright, so here we have the choice of either casting Witchbane Orb or Liliana. I think because we can Edict, Liliana seems like the, the thing to do here. I should have played the Opal and then the Watery Grave tapped. So th this is nice, I've never really had the ability to just kill a creature. Um, you know, Sam was teasing me about the fact that this deck just can't destroy a permanent ever. And I was like, yeah, like, we're so good at making their permanents do nothing relevant. Uh, of course, why would we need to kill a permanent? Wow, 1%. That's, um, I had that happen at a GP in Japan. It was right after they changed the, let's see... Right, day two used to be just like the top 124, 64 players, 128, uh, depending on how many people played, and they changed it to everyone who had a high enough record or like a minimum of 124 players. And so a bunch of people dropped when they had two losses because they figured they wouldn't make day two. Or And I just kept... I went X2 and 1 and made day 2, and then I won out from there, and like finished ninth on tie breaks by like a percentage. I was so excited too, I was so sure I'd, you know, I was, had, just, had just made my first top 8. Um, okay, so with this Unward Ego... I'm not sure what we name, and I, I'm, I'm curious what other people think who know the Storm deck well. Um, like, if I had Damping Sphere out, I'd be inclined to name something like Wipe Away, because they, they just can't win with a Damping Sphere in play. Um, so, Witchbane Orb isn't a strict lock, because they can Echoing Truth it or Braid it. Wipe away. Spellscape types both of those, so it's just wipe away. Um, I'm trying to think if we're just supposed to like take away something like Manamorphose, which is you know just like a strong utility spell. Like that's a core part of their engine. I think. What's your plan versus empty? Yeah, bridge is the plan versus empty. I mean, we can just go after the win conditions. I don't hate this. So we'll go for empty the warrens. That's a good point. We don't have a bridge right now. We don't have as much card draw as other versions of the deck. All right, so they, they do have an abrade. And let's see, 
Do they keep in any of their graveyard stuff? No. So they have an Echoing Truth, an Abraden Hand, and a Braid in their deck. They did keep in the Past in Flames. Okay. And then we're going to plus Siliana and just get rid of this Watery Grave since we already have the mana that we need to cast the Witchbane Orb. Yeah, two past in flame, so they're still like pretty committed to it. And right, with this cage, I don't really care about it, but it's important to know that like a cage is a good thing to keep in for game three if we get to game three. That it's you know worth protecting, which we kind of already knew. And um Right, that like getting a Graph Seeker's Cage with a Whirr might be a priority in game three. What uh, what deck did you play uh, at the PTQ, Jarvis? All right, Simic Ascendancy. So just do a quick preview for a second. Uh, blue green, one blue green, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Whenever one or more plus one, one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. Fascinating. Alright, uh, we're going to... Right, so if we redirect to the spell skite, we lose the Liliana... I think that's fine. We don't need the Liliana that much, so we'll redirect. Yeah, I can see that in Hardened Scaled Scales. Oh no! I think losing that artifact, we are actually have the Witchbane Orb turned off. Might be better to not play the Mox. Keep the land. Interesting. Right, like if we kept the Watery Grave and discarded Mox to Liliana, it would be better. So we can't cast this on two, which is really too bad since almost all their bounce spells and abrades are on twos. We could hold it. I guess we'll... I mean, but we're just gonna get... Yeah, hold it. Right, we could play it on... Z yeah. We could play it on zero and cast the Witch Banor, but that doesn't seem good for us. Yay! Nine bits. Hey Charles, how's it going? Alright, so we got the welding jar here. Uh, it turns off mox, but we already have a mox in play. Right. So we'll cast this on two. So this is going to turn off their Echoing Truths and Abrades. So now, I think now they still have a wipe away. Cupid Slim, thank you so much for the subscribe. And so we're not going to be able to play any more Spell Skites because we put Chalice on two. Yeah, they're on the beatdown plan. We can cast this Chalice now, and if we can find one of our bridges, I think we're in great shape. Uh, finding Tesseract would of course also be fine. Uh, finding 
bottled cloister would double the rate that we find all those things that we care about. So, uh, two bit slim. I'm, I'm curious, like, who, who are you? Where are you from? Like, how did you get into magic? What do you like about this deck? Brian Cole! Ah! How's it going? Alright, so we can't cast this Sky 8. Or we can, but it'll just get countered. I don't think this Chalice is going away. I guess we have 5 mana, so if I draw a bridge, I can still just cast bridge and then cast the spell sky to go down to 0 cards. But I am going to cast cards into my own chalice. Bit slim was me accidentally subscribing one of my employees. <laughs> well, uh, thank your employee for the follow, I appreciate it. <laughs> also, perhaps uh, best use of someone leaving their device unsecured. Oh yeah, this is the man, the legend. Sweet. So we find a bridge. Let's see if they have a remand here. I guess they can't even remand it. And because of Brawl, I'm going to cast the spell skate and just have it get chaliced. And we'll need to find our Tezzeret to close the game out. Or I guess Liliana could conceivably do that, though much more slowly. Could be a second employee watching Twitch on his behalf, you never know. <laughs> so Charles, I'm curious. I, I see that you like don't really play Magic, but still seem interested in uh, deck building. Is that is that about right? Or are you just like avoiding competitive play? So you're saying, uh, Brian, that your employee is uh, more famous than you because you just impersonated them? Um, so let's see. I guess if we got another Chalice, Chalice on three would be pretty great since that turns off Wipe Away. Like, we already have our own bridge. And then I think we'd be just kind of completely in the clear. Look at this easy game of magic. So easy. I feel like ensnaring bridge makes everything way easier. Like, I was thinking about it. There's a lot of incredible, like, toolbox decks and toolbox cards. Most of them do creatures, so that, like, most of the toolbox decks are, like, creature toolboxes. And, like, their plan B is always just, like, beat you down, which is, like, a very solid plan B. But, and Staring Bridge turns off all of that, which is, I think, why this toolbox is better than the creature toolboxes. Yeah, you don't really follow the meta, but my deck is sweet. Yeah, Kyle Bodie, who I think, uh follows magic very little other than to play the like smart and thin invitational every year also like this is like this deck looks super sweet drop by like last week um yeah like this archetype just feels really good um I guess my current strategy for building modern decks is to find a card that was at one point banned and try and figure out the best possible thing to do with it. Um, and, you know, I like, I don't know, I tried every single flavor of prison deck just out of curiosity. Like I saw, I think like Craig Wesco wrote an article about, it was like an eight blood moon goblin prison deck. And, right, so I had, like, Magus of the Moon, and Actual Blood Moon, and I think it's, like, Goblin King that gives your goblins plus one, plus one, and Mountain Walk, which is, like, an old-school trick I remember from, like, Standard when Magus of the Moon was printed. And, uh, you know, then I had, like, Ensnaring Bridge, and... 
Did it have chalice? I don't remember if it had chalice or not. But like, it probably didn't. And like, most of the elements seem pretty unimpressive, but uh, having chalice seems super sweet. Or uh, ensnaring bridge seems super sweet. So these bridges are redundant, but it does mean that they can't like wipe up one bridge away. So there's still like there's still grape shot. Grape shot could still be a problem for us. Uh, I think Chalice only counters like the first copy, so like all the additional copies happen. But we have Witch Bane Orbs, so they can't target us. Yeah, it's just the like the one wipe away. They would cast wipe away on our end step and like wipe away the Witchbane Orb and then they'd try and cast a bunch of spells culminating in Grape Shot targeting us. So I could definitely see, uh, we're talking about Simic Ascendancy as an alternate win condition in Hardened Scales. You need to, every time you put, yeah. All right, I'm gonna look at the Simic Ascendancy card again. I wanna get this right. Um, Simic Ascendancy says, Oh no, that's not the card. All right, green, blue, one green, blue, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. That's like comparable to paying uh, the cost on animation module. And whenever you put one or more plus one, plus one counters on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. Beginning of your upkeep, if it has 20 or more, you win the game. Yeah, I could actually, it's cheap enough. I could certainly see that being played in Hardened Skills. Yeah, Koala ideas inbound, totally. Uh, what I'm really trying to do is figure out what the four worst cards in this deck are and play ideas inbound in this deck. I think ideas inbound is an incredibly good idea if you're playing Chalices. All right, so this hand has no mana, so we will mulligan it, which is sad because Damping Sphere is amazing here, but turns out all your best hands happen when you have no lands. Um, this hand doesn't really do anything either. We need better disruption early, and I'm pretty sure they kill us by the time we get this Tezzeret ready. I think we're obligated to keep this. And we definitely need like a meaningful piece of interaction. I don't want to land. <laughs> we do need to land for the Liana, but any artifact will turn this Mox on, and we also have the best chance of drawing lands. What's so good about ideas inbound? You're not getting it. So Right, like, first of all, there's just the, like, principle that uh, filtering your hand is good, right? In Magic, if you're just, like, living off the top of your deck and you have no control over what's happening, it's, you know, like, not a good scene. Uh, the second thing going on with Ideas Unbound is one of the nice things about Faithless Looting is that you can draw and discard, and Sword of the Meek is just a card that likes to be discarded. Um, so we're not going to wind up with the double black for Liliana here. Uh, right, so like putting a Sword of the Meek in the graveyard is actually very advantageous in a few situations. Like if you're playing against humans and they have meddling mage your sword, or if you're playing against spirits and they have a spell quiller up, uh, your ideas in bound lets you kind of have your sword dodge their piece of interaction. And 
uh, as a deck that's playing a lot of specific block pieces against different decks, uh, having un ideas unbound means that if you draw a lock piece that's not relevant, like let's say you have a Sorcerer's Spyglass against Storm, um, you can just you know, cycle it for something else. And it's much better than something like um, Thirst for Knowledge, which is a good card draw pe that people play in artifact decks, because it only costs two. And in modern, like, mana is at a just ridiculous premium. So, uh, yeah, those would be my reasons for liking Ideas Unbound. And of course, right, we can't play things that cost one because we're playing Chalice. And right, it can be that, let's say, right, we're, oh yes, how lucky are we? We are so lucky. <laughs> I mean, you know, I put, I, I was debating as to whether or not I should have another underground river or another island, so it's not entirely luck. So we get to edict away this mana source. My stuff is cheap enough that we could play the three cards and not discard at the o yeah, 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 right. Um, Ideas and Mount has the added advantage that, like, this deck plays Hellbent, and, uh, right, Ideas and Bound, the discard clause is at the next end step. It's not right away. So if you, let's say you're Hellbent, you have, like, five mana, you draw an Ideas and Bound, you cast it, you probably draw, like, a land, a cheap artifact, and an expensive artifact, you play all three, and it was a draw three. Um, so it seems like a very strong candidate card. Um, and it's just like a question of figuring out which cards underperform, relatively speaking. All right, so... Yeah, the version that we posted today has no looting. The versions that I've been playing like for the last couple weeks are all looting versions. So if we tether it here, I think we plus to pr protect our planeswalkers. Or we, we minus, I mean. Like we can't really draw any interaction pieces that we can cast. But maybe that's not actually what we care about. I guess we can plus here and get a little bit more information. Like if we minus, we could also just bash and put them at 12. It's still only a three turn clock. They're probably likely to kill us within that time. I guess we're supposed to plus and just look for a lock piece. I don't think we can race here. And they're not killing Liliana or Tezzeret with their Brawl. Uh, Bobble lets us dig more. It turns this Opal on. That doesn't do anything. Orb seems like the best choice here. We can cast it next turn. I guess we probably should have plus before plusing Liliana. Welding Jar Beatdown seems like an option, but I guess I feel like Liliana is going to take away their hand, or Tezzer is going to find a key lock piece. And like the beatdown plan just seems too slow to me. Like, right, if we put them down to 11 here, we can make another one and attack with two, and they can like chump lock with Brawl. And their deck just seems like it's. They should be able to find a win before then. I think maybe the main reason to make a 5-5 five five would be to like block Brawl here so that Liliana can like edict him. Alright, them not What is happening? Alright, we'll definitely continue to look for prison pieces. Complete miss. So I 
think we're supposed to plus. Like, I think not attacking with Brawl means that they don't want to lose a card here. Uh, Fitch says, I was thinking a bunch of spicy cards for your deck over the weekend. Yeah, lay it on me. I'm certainly interested in hearing about spicy card options. I mean, right, maybe I'm giving the Storm deck more credit and should be beating down. Remand, sure. I just think that, I don't know, historically Liliana is very punishing for them. Right? Like, they want to build up this hand of cards and she just stops them from doing it. And Tezzeret can hit a bunch of artifacts that are pretty crippling for them. And I like, I'm interested in, I guess, an argument for this, like, Tezzeret beatdown would have been better. One Masterminds acquisition. So, like, Masterminds Acquisition is super spendy. We're supposed to plus one here to look for... Spellskite. We could Chalice for two. We can work for Damping Sphere. I like the Spellskite, because... We can spell skate and were. Uh, but we could chalice for two, which turns off a lot of their interactive cards and rituals. But then we can't cast an additional spell. Alright, people seem to think that Chalice for 2 is going to sh just shut off their deck. And we can still play the rest of our cards after that. Uh, so I'm getting Edict, their Brawl. And then we'll cast this Chalice on 2. And then I think, I think we'll start beating down next turn with Tezzeret. Alright, victory over Storm. Huzzah! Um, yeah, so like, Master Mace's acquisition is expensive. Uh, my goal has been to main deck uh, an artifact that wins against each matchup. Uh, the loosest thing I have is uh, like Damping Sphere is really good against Storm. It's only kind of okay against KCI, so that's kind of weak, and I actually don't have anything that beats, like, Grixis Word X, but I think Grixis Word X are supposed to be, like, you know, 0.37% of the metagame, so I'm not sure that I'm supposed to be, like, having literally any card in the 75 that beats them. And then, uh, like, when I sideboard, I get to maybe get a couple slightly stronger bullets, like I have a... Phyrexian Revoker for KCI. Um, but I think that's actually... I guess I have, like, Torpor Orb. But, like, you know, in the Torpor Orb matchups game one, like, Witchbane Orb is usually sufficient. So I think, like, Masterpiece Acquisition is not exactly what the deck needs, but I like that you suggested it. Um, let's see, in the dark, this doesn't make mana, so no matter what we're playing, it's bad. Uh, this hand has, like, half a combo, uh, chalice to mess with people, we'll try it. This looks like it has some, some disruption for everybody. 
Uh, Kowal says I could just thirst for knowledge. Like, oh, we don't want another spyglass. Do you think, like, thirst for knowledge is actually, like, it just seems way worse than ideas inbound? Uh, I'm not going to cast the opal here. No reason to tip anything. All right, so we're playing against Amulet Titan. Uh, so they could have Amulet. They could have Sakura Tribe Scout. I mean, I think we definitely want Chalice for one of them. Um, we'll get out this bauble and this opal. Okay. Um, you don't actually want cards. Yeah, I don't actually necessarily want cards. Like, a strong point of Faithless Looting is getting rid of a card, so Ideas Unbound also accomplishes that goal. Uh, Ideas Unbound is even a little bit better, because if you cast a bunch of the cards, then you can discard three cards, and you can get Hellbent much quicker. Do I want to sacrifice this bauble? I guess so. We're still looking for interactive plays. I guess it turns off the mocks, but we can turn it back on. Sure. Uh, okay, so we have the full, like, super combo here. Um... So if I cast Thopter Foundry and then were for KCI next turn, we can go infinite immediately. So I'll do that. Like, I don't think they're about to go off. Uh, basically having this Chalice on one guarantees that they don't have any of the... They won't have a turn where they can attack with the Titan the turn the Titan comes into play. Uh, Charles Eastman says, minus one chalice, minus two spyglass, plus three ideas. What? Alright. I mean, they do have a main deck, Reclamation Sage. They're going for the chalice. Okay. I think we're still just going to go infinite here. Oh, we don't have enough artifacts for KCI. Let's see. We have blue, blue, blue. Yeah, we're short. We're short one. So instead, I think we're going to cast this. We see they have an amulet. They have Azusa. They have Pact of Negation. And summoner's pact. Uh, so it's we want to take away their ability to go hasty. So is it Boros something? I need to look at the card. Modern magic amulet titan. Um, the land is not Boros Garrison's Slayer's Stronghold. Okay. Now, Sunhome lets them get Double Strike. We don't care that much about the Double Strike part. We care mostly about... Uh, like, them going Amulet, Azusa do a bunch of silly things, get a Titan in play, and then have that land come into play untapped. The Boros Garrison, the, the Slayer Stronghold, giving the Titan haste and then attacking with the Titan, and then also probably double striking us. So now we have three and four. We can get the KCI with War now. 
Do they have a pact of negation? So we're gonna want. I don't really care about killing that guy. So we're going to want to were. Let's see, on the same turn that they're going to use their pact. So they have to like double pact so they don't have nine mana to pay for it. Yeah, that seems true. Um, so Trinket Mage, they're going to get uh, maybe Engineered Explosives. And put it on two. Um, we have the welding jar, so we can save one of these things. I think this is fine. We'll just save the Thopter Foundry. So they're still holding up Pack of Negation. Can we get around this? Not really. I think we just need to slow them down by making them making them packed so that they have to take a turn off doing that. Three, four, five. If they don't pack, yeah, they have to pack that. It's like if they don't pack, we're in really amazing shape. So we sword here. Attack with the Thopter. Uh, so now I think like, maybe I should have done it. Maybe I was just supposed to make them packed on the same. Yeah, that's probably a bad play. I was probably just supposed to keep holding up the war. So that they try to use their Titan on the same same turn. Because like uh, these Thopters just there's they can never never race this combo that our opponent's assembling. Uh, we don't have like a bridge in play. I mean we're going to try and race. All right, so now they use the Summoner's Pact. I guess they, if they, yeah, they'd probably be able to pay the pact even. What's crumbling vestige? That's just one man of any color. Interesting. Why do they play crumbling vestige? I've never seen that. All right, so they're going to explosives here. We're going to jar on the Thopter Foundry. The sword is just going to get destroyed here. But we can sacrifice any of these zero, zero CMC artifacts to bring it back. And we're going to do it with the opal because we want to cycle this bauble on the, on the chance that we live through this turn. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I guess they would have been able to pay for both packs at once, so maybe our best plan was actually just casting the whir and then hoping to hit another whir. Alright, so they've decided to attack with their entire team. Maybe not realizing that we can get the sword back. Maybe not caring that we can get the sword back. Okay, 
Okay, so they have a Bajuka Bog, and they didn't attack with the Sakura Tribe Elder. So we, we need to do all these things before the Bajuka Bog goes back to their hand. Otherwise, uh, they can uh, play the Bajuka Bog at instant speed, which we can play around by sacrificing the Bauble, but we really want this bobble to turn into like a piece of interactive hate. So we don't want to sacrifice it just to save the sword. Whereas like, you know, the mox is worth one thopter a turn, but there's not necessarily going to be a lot of turns left unless things go very well for us. So... Simic Growth Chamber is going to return the bog so that they can clear our graveyard at will, as long as they're holding that tribe scout. And we can actually kill their titan here. Which sounds great to me. Like, the rest of these guys aren't scary, but the titan represents the ability to keep on restocking more titans to get more, like, engineered explosives. That actually went pretty well. I think that was the the optimal outcome we were hoping for. Uh, <laughs> let's see, Damping Sphere, I don't think we're gonna, oh no, they only have one green source. So this Damping Sphere is just going to kill them. They're going to die to their pact. Because they don't have a double green. <laughs> Uh, we'll pay the two life. It's worth a Thopter, so we're really only paying one life and getting a Thopter. But yeah, I think they're just dead here. Damping Sphere is just a nightmare card for them. Uh, some local Seattle players were having some great results with this deck. But uh, I just kept running into like Blood Moons and Damping Spheres. Oh, they, they had a gemstone mine. Fair enough. So they're attacking. We could block these guys. I guess killing a Zusa might be useful. But like because we just have this Yeah, we'll sacrifice the damping sphere. Because we have this like great source of ongoing life. We don't we don't care about getting hit by these things that often. Uh, we just mostly want to race. So they can give Azusa plus two plus zero, but not double strike. Not both. So we'll just pop in here, kill Azusa. Uh, sacrificing the Damping Sphere is, like, pretty sad on the scale of, like, things that we do. But I think if we don't, like, we don't really have... They have, like, several draw steps to get out of the situation they're in. And so I think just trying to clock them out is well worth it. Alright, so we'll play this Welding Jar. Their scout is tapped. So now is the time to make more, more Thopters. Right, in theory, they could play the Engineered Explosives on zero and kill all these Thopters. But I think they only play one main deck as a tutorable target. So I think, like, they just have to get a Primeval Titan here. Um, so, like, sacrificing the Damping Sphere gave them, I guess, that out, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to cast it. Uh, games 2 and 3 are going to be substantially easier. We can bring in these Unmoored Egos. And, you know, even though Thopter Sword won for us, it's really, 
really slow and takes up a lot of slots, and we want to use these slots for other cards. Uh, their deck isn't really targeting us, so we don't need Witchbane Orb. The Bell Cloister is still useful. Uh, if we kind of achieve a lock, it secures the lock. And also, that you saw they have a bunch of like random little dudes. And if we can't empty our hand fast enough, being able to tutor for that with the war is quite good. Uh, Torpor Orb shuts down their Titan and their Sages. We don't really need Graft Digger's Cage against them. The Spell Skites are going to be able to redirect their destroy effects. Hmm. I guess we have more cards than I'm used to because these chalices are still here. So what else do we want? Liliana's okay. Phyrexian Revoker is actually also okay. Like, naming explosives is pretty good. Maybe I just bring in this package and we don't need the spell skites. How good is Liliana here? I think she's much better on the play. So we should bring in some spell skites. I just want answers to nature's claim. Oh, this seems good. We have six answers to nature's claim. I guess we also have chalice, which is just a mega answer to nature's claim. Yeah, so historically I'm used to having to deal with like four nature's claims out of these decks that can draw a bunch of them. But it could be the case that with Chalice, I don't need quite as many Nature's Claims in the deck. Okay, uh, this hand looks awesome. We have uh, Chirper Orb to like remove all their comes into play effects, and Snaring Bridge to turn off all of their um, attack steps. And we have Ego, which we can take away Titan, which is just their key card. This, this hand kind of does everything. Uh, I probably should have let on the Watery Grave tapped. I just added the Watery... Like, I'm so used to just always playing these fast lands and having eight of them in the deck, but with only four in the deck, the chance of just hitting fast land after fast land isn't really a concern anymore. So there's the Scout. The Scout's going to let them... You know, accelerate considerably. I have an amulet. There's, there's nothing to really cast here besides the Turp Orb. And now, if I drew another land, I have enough permanence in play that I can crack this bobble. Like, we can already whir for Dampening Sphere, which is, I think, the best thing to whir for against them. So we have a Nature's Claim covered. We have a Shaman covered. We don't have an answer for Engineered Explosives yet. I guess the Wailing Jar can protect one level, so I guess we do have an answer to Explosives. Uh, right, so Azusa plus Amulet is usually like all of their most explosive starts. Um, right, like this Gruel Turf can basically be a six mana ritual if it wanted to be. But I think, yeah, so they're going to go for explosives maybe, or Summoner's Pack so they can tighten next turn. So this is great, this Ego is just going to strip the Titan right out of their hand. I mean, they get to replace it, so it's not like a huge advantage, but I guess we'll play this Inventor's Fair. Yeah, and just Ego them. And my experience is that they usually just concede when you take away Titan, because their deck is so built around it, but we'll see if they decide to. Primeval Titan. See if they have like alternate win conditions or like if they have as a comma, they could still win. Oh, oh, this is actually right. They hadn't packed it for the Titan yet. So they have an Emrakul, 
that's interesting. And Rurik Thar, and a Walking Ballista. Okay, so there's still some ways that they can get us two engineered explosives. Uh, so the like the Rurik Thar can make it so that we can only cast like n more spells in the game. So like he's actually a pretty powerful threat. It's possible I should have cast Ensnaring Bridge last turn instead of Unmoored Ego. I don't think so. Like, I think we can cast Tezzeret and Bridge. Uh, Sistral says, my experience with the Ego versus deck is that you go for Titan and then lose to Rurikthar. I kind of think the first Ego should maybe get Rurikthar. Interesting. Like, right, Titan, Turp Orb's already turning off the scariest part of Titan. So if we, like, also have this ensnaring bridge, Titan's basically dead. I think you're right, Sistrel. I think I think naming Rurikthar might be where it's at. So casting a Mox, bad idea. So I think we want an ensnaring bridge here so Rurikthar can't attack us. We're going to take six for our trouble, but we're saving six, so it's a good deal. We'll play this land tapped, and playing the opal costs us six and saves us only two. It doesn't seem like what we want to do. You think the game is over? You think we're winning or we're losing? So I think we get to cast one more spell. I think that spell is Tezzeret. And Tezzeret gets to make a blocker that blocks these little guys. Uh, Braid is pretty good, but we can rescue it. The fact that we're getting one to turn off of this Inventor's Fair, I think, is a pretty huge deal. Alright, so we're going to cast Tez. And we're going to minus him. And play this Watery Grave. I think it'll be hard to get cards out of our hand, but Inventor's Fair does help. Yeah, but we don't need to empty our hand, right? Like, we ha as long as this bridge doesn't die. I'm really worried about cards like a braid and engineered explosives and not really worried about much else. Like, we can minus Tesseret again to get another 5-5. Five, five. Not that we think we need to at this point. Alright, so there's the shores. I guess we can plus and fail to find. Like, I guess we could, yeah, we can't chalice for like two turns. So the question is, yeah, chalice doesn't really help with explosives. Welding jar helps with explosives. If we have three more turns, we can go to one and cast like one more spell. So the question is like, what do we want our one more spell to be? If we cast Damping Sphere, they can still cast most of their spells. Wielding Jar is pretty good. Bottled Cloister is really what we want though. No, yes? Yeah, I think we don't want any of these. Oh, but Tesseret, if he goes up three times, can also drain life. I think we do want this Welding Jar. So, like, I feel like this 5-5 five five is 
protecting us on the ground. Oh, we're not getting life right now because we we'll use the welding jar. Interesting. So, oh, we should have gotten the spell skate. Spell skate is a creature, in addition to being an artifact. All right, spell skate's where it's at. We don't want that. Oh, we should totally grab a spell skate. That would have been awesome. Spell skate protects our artifacts from getting destroyed. Doesn't trigger Rurik Thar. Makes a perfectly nice 5-5. Five five. So an opponent only gets to cast two more spells. Their ancient strings whiffed, which is great for us. Uh, so we'll plus here. Don't want any of those. Play the river of tears. So here, if we drain them, they're like locked out of the game, right? So we could sacrifice our Tezzeret. They have fewer cards than us. So they would deck first. Oh, I guess they can still cast creatures. All right, Spellscape's awesome. I think Spellscape means that we can afford to plus one again. Uh, I don't want the bobble. Yeah, so here we go. Here's Spellskite. Spellskite's going to mean that we start gaining life again. <clears throat> we can drain our opponent for six to put them at two so they can't cast any more spells. If we pull the other Spellskite, they'd just be dead here. But as it is, I think the Spellskite means that they have to draw... I mean, Engineering Explosives on 2 doesn't even do it for them. Alright, so now we can just drain them to death. This Ancient Stirrings has to be... I don't even know what the perfect card is for them here. But I guess they're going to show us. Uh, Tillery West, yes. What are they getting with the Teleri West? Ballista? Oh. No, we're fine. Ballista doesn't kill us. We have the Spell Skate. We can redirect up to four Ballista triggers. One, two, three. Yeah. And then they still have to deal three more damage to us. Uh, maybe they have enough mana. Yeah, th I think this isn't enough. Five? Yeah, five's definitely not enough. Oh, I guess they can re redirect things to Tezzeret. Yeah, five's not enough. They can get Tezzeret... They can do one damage to Tesseret, but Tesseret will still drain them for four. So, we did it! Woo! Um, sick. Yeah, I like... I mean, Tesseret's just so good. Um, all these matches where we just want to be in the controlling role, we get to replace the, like, nine card sword plus foundry plus ironworks package with just two Tesserets. And... The Tezzerets, like, find us more prison pieces instead of just sitting there doing nothing. So, like, we get seven slots to play with, and we're just a better prison builder. And, like, you know, I think Tezzeret offers the same inevitability. I'm sure one of these days someone else is getting pithy needle my Tezzeret. I guess I've had a Grixis War player do that. But... You know, against Grixis War, we just put in, like, all of our aggro pieces. Like, anything that can possibly win a match. And they pithy, they pithy needle them all. 
So, so far the chalice has looked okay, and we've managed to find what we need often enough. Um, all right, this hand, just no mana, so we're going to have to ship it. Uh, this one has two-thirds of an infinite combo. The bauble could be anything. Damping Sphere is good disruption against a number of decks. Don't want a second sword. I think we have to keep this. I think it's not fantastic, but there's a lot of good draws for this. So pretty unfortunate. This looks like blue-white control. The best, like, we basically just want Thopter Foundry on turn two against these guys. If we resolve a Thopter Foundry, it's very, very hard for them to, like, set up the Cryptic Command to bounce it, plus the, like, other Cryptic Command to counter it. They do often have, like, one or two Detention Spheres, but they, like, right, their, card, their answers are all, like, late and expensive. Uh, they also have, like, maybe, like, one deck, main deck Logic Knot, and one main deck. Let's see, do I cast the sword here? They could counter it, that's fine. I don't want the sword to get Detention Sphered. So I think I'm actually going to cast Damping Sphere, but first, this Mishra's Bubble. Uh, Damping Sphere can sometimes cause some inconveniences for their Snapcasters. Yeah, they have like one main deck negate. If we had had a Thopter Foundry there, it would have been very likely to resolve. Now it's iffy. All right, we did draw the word though. So this, this is kind of nice. I didn't crack the bobble because I wanted to have two permanents for exactly the situation. Oh, this river of tears is, is super awkward. I can't, I don't have triple blue right now. So if our opponent like taps out for Jace or something, as they're about to, we get to or I guess we can wait for them. They're they're pretty likely to plus two us. So we can whir at the end of their turn. Um, obviously like we could also whir for needle here, but that's not proactive enough. Like they'll eventually figure out a solution for the needle. And what we really just need is the Thopter Foundry. Uh, so we're gonna go whir for Thopter Foundry. If we draw another land, we can then play KCI, sacrifice the Damping Sphere to get two mana, play the sword, and just go infinite. Um, they do have answers to infinite, but, you know, it's still a, a pain for them. Blue, blue, blue. Tap this, tap this. There's our foundry. All right, we didn't we didn't totally just luck out on them. Uh, so we can either cast chalice on one here, but like Jace is just so good at digging for cards. That doesn't really do much for us. So I'm just gonna get the sword in play, and now we're probably gonna want to sacrifice this bauble. It's not doing anything for us. Um, I think the Damping Sphere is still probably good for us. Like, they might have a bunch of, like, one mana cycling cards. I guess they can just send them all away with, with Jace. So we can, I guess if they, anytime they tap out, we can just go infinite. Otherwise, I'm probably not going to want to cast this at Ironworks. Like it's just going to spend an entire turn's worth of mana to trade with some of their mana. And what we like about this Thopter Foundry is their mana can't really trade effectively with our mana. They have a Cryptic Command. This is a good spot to Cryptic Command and bounce the Thopter Foundry. Um, 
but if they don't have a follow-up play, it doesn't necessarily make sense for them. So we'll see what their top card is. Teferi. Teferi is, you know, a great answer to our permanence. I usually needle Teferi before anything else. So here's the opal. I'm going to attack Jace uh, before casting a spell. If they have Cryptic Command, if you cast a spell that they care about, they can get the like free bounce your team. Sure, a land. Uh, this is actually pretty bad for them. Uh, the Damping Sphere is going to stop them from casting Cryptic now. And... It's like they only have a couple of counter spells that aren't cryptic. Yeah, so here they're tapping their four to cryptic. Uh, they're not able to do it. Oh no, they have a logic knot. Okay. So they're going to try and make us pay two. No. Uh, maybe it was a mistake for us to play the opal. It was probably a mistake to play the opal. Fair enough. Live by the Damping Sphere, die by the Damping Sphere. Alright, so they usually have like one Knot, one Negate, three Cryptics. I guess my expectation was that they're going to have Cryptic. Let's see, I guess we can assume that our opponent's smart. They're probably, like, we should always just assume our opponent's smart. So if they have two and two and Path. I guess they were always going to be able to not for more than we could pay. So here's Teferi. I'm guessing they're going to put our Thopter Foundry down. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get our sword in while we can. It's possible that like even trying to cast the, the Spyglass is a mistake. Like. We gave them the opportunity to trade mana with mana. And, right, the world in which they cast a fairy and we make five Thopters and have a total of six Thopters is pretty uncomfortable for them, right? Like, we just get to kill their Planeswalkers. So, yeah, probably a mistake. I think this chalice does a ton, but I don't think the ironworks or the witchbane orb are particularly great here. I guess the witchbane orb stops Jace from knocking a card off the top of our library. Like next turn, he's going to plus two us to put the. Thopter Foundry on the bottom of our library. So we're going to cast Witchbane Orb and he's going to have to try and counter it. Alright, so the, like the previous turn, if instead we just made a bunch of Thopters, uh, Detention Spheres, uh, on the sword. Yep. Can't sacrifice it right now. Interesting. I wonder, I wonder how much like we're supposed to cast KCI there. Right, so play this, play Witchbane Orb. We care a lot more about resolving Thopter Foundry than Sword. Like they can't really counter Sword. And so playing the Switchbane Orb to protect getting a thought, like right now their Jace can't mind sculpt our Thopter Foundry off the top of our deck. I mean, it's very likely that they have a Cryptic Command by now. They've seen a third of their deck. They've seen more than a third of their deck. 
Right, so way back there, if I made like five thopters instead of casting Spyglass, opponent would have had to deal with, I guess they could have had a det like Detention Sphere would have cleared it, but they wouldn't have had mana to Detention Sphere and to Fairy. Like it would have just kept them on the back foot. All right, so we'll see if they have it here. They almost certainly have the Cryptic Command. I guess they could have Snapcaster for Logic Knot. So if we cast this Ironworks first, we increase the total amount of mana we have available. So that actually seems reasonable to me. We have all these other artifacts we can sacrifice, two, four, six, eight. And if they pay two and one, one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, they can't logic balance for more than six. So if if that's their answer, we have we have the artifacts to eat. Like the damping sphere is hitting the end of its natural usefulness. All right, so they're best in the Chalice. That's interesting. I would not expect that Chalice is what they would care about here. I think they can sacrifice the Damping Sphere and put a new Chalice for one. Like, Chalice for two obviously turns off Snapcaster and some of their counter magic. Chalice for four on Cryptic Command might actually be amazing. But if that's what they chose to bounce, it just says to me that like even with Jace working, they care enough about that that we should also care about it. That's interesting. I, I would have never expected them to care that much about it. All right, so we're gonna cast Bottle Cloister. Uh, this is like potentially very risky because they can now set up lines where they're like, I bounce, I bounce one of your cards with this cryptic command, and then I destroy your Bottle Cloister. And instead of the card going back to your hand, it's like permanently destroyed. That said, you know, uh, it's pretty hard to get back from the situation where they have Jace and Fairy active. Like, I imagine there, there's a window of a few turns where we can climb back in, but we can only do that if we're, you know, drawing a couple cards a turn. Like... I think if we don't draw a threat this next turn, we probably just scoop. They get three cards a turn, and it's pretty impossible for them to not. Yeah, I think we'll just go to the next game. Right, there's a very, very small chance that they haven't hit any of their other counters or like detention sphere type things, but. We we still are two cards away from having any kind of combo together. So in this matchup, they don't really have a lot of threats. I like keeping one ensnaring bridge. Uh, all of their effects are like exile effects and not destroy effects, so welding jar isn't that good here. Uh, these matchups are going to go like long. We don't necessarily need the explosiveness of these opals. Uh, Graftiker's Cage. I guess it doesn't work well with Chalice, but it hurts their Snapcasters. Turpro Orb, though, has no such troubles. Uh, we want these Unmoored Egos for sure. And Tezzeret and Liliana. Spell Skite's okay, but they're very likely to bring Stony Silence in, so it's likely to get turned off. 
This damping sphere doesn't really do anything. But it might be better to have like a second bridge. I guess Phyrexian Revoker turns off their Planeswalkers. This looks decent. Oh, Ironworks doesn't do anything. Oh no, we have our Thopters and Swords in. So we could just go infinite. Seems better than any of these alternatives. Spell Sky can be pretty good. Like you could like whir it in and redirect a detention sphere if there's not Stony Silence up. I don't think I want a ton of them, but like having access to the first one seems like a good trick to have available. Alright, this hand looks I think great. Having access to like Trin Tooth Opter Foundry. Uh, they might have a spell piercer too, but those are that's like their only real shot of getting rid of Thopter Foundry right away. Uh, we have this Unmoored Ego, which uh, let's see, things to name are like Cryptic Command, Fairy, or a uh, Cryptic Command, Fairy, Jace, Stony Silence. I guess we probably we won't have three mana before they can silence us, so it's not not a realistic option. Detention sphere. Uh, they have the most copies of Jace. They probably have like two detention spheres and two Teferis. But like, all right, so they have the stony silence. Ooh, Liliana. So an early Liliana, we don't have a lot of answers for. She can just like eat their entire hand. Let's see, so if we play Liliana, we plus her, we discard Spellskite, which is basically a dead card at this point. They discard anything. We play Watery Grave plus Bottle Cloister. If we plus her, we lose our Ego then. Or we can Ego and then Watery Grave and then Cloister the next turn. Or if we Ego them now... We can Liliana the next turn and then just like... Curve out on cards. So if we Detention Sphere, they don't have an oh Detention Sphere, they don't have an answer for Liliana. They could have a counter spell. So the question is, do we want to expose Liliana to a Detention Sphere? I guess they only have two, so I think I think it's better to just jam the Liliana here. Like if they don't answer her, we're in such good shape. And if they have the Detention Sphere, then they only have one more Detention Sphere. So like, a card that we might otherwise unmoor to Ego, we don't have to care about. There we go. So this next turn we can choose either to Ego for Jace or cast Bottled Cloister. I think we have a lot of answers to like a resolve Jace. So I think I want a bottled cloister. I guess they could cryptic and we'd lose it. Alright, I'll unmoored you go for uh, cryptic command. Crucible of Worlds, interesting. Do we have an LD plan in here? Surgical, Lyra, Jace. 
the Celestial Purge and Gideon. Alright, so they brought in like kind of a variety pack of aggro plans. And their hand is pretty weak. Um, this chalice would have been pretty good against it. I still like. I still like our choices fine. Liliana is very good against there. Like, I bring in some Angel's plan. Ghost Court and Field of Ruin feel a little scary now. So we'll. Bottled Cloister makes Crucible less scary. Like, we're likely to draw lands to keep up with their. Uh, you know, land destruction. So I'm not sh And, I mean, we have plenty of basics. We have five, I think. Four or five. And I think maybe after seeing the third or fourth, they might not, like, want to expend their resources on that fight. So I think right now we're slightly advantaged. We have Cloister going, which is giving us two turn cards a turn. Uh, and we have lots of cards that are, you know, trumps to what they have. All right, conceivably they could keep Field of Ruining us, and at some point we fall behind, but we have so many cheap cards in our deck that I don't even know that if they Field of Ruin us four times that that's, like, really a problem. We got rid of, yeah. So I think we want to chalice for one and ego them here. And I want to chalice before I do this because we could cycle them into uh, one CMC cards. All right, so this resolves. I think we're going to go for Teferi next, even though Jace is very powerful. Uh, Teferi is the one that can take away our permanence. Oh, man. <laughs> Looks like we made the right choice. Okay. So next, what do we chalice on next? Uh, we don't do two, because a bunch of our cards are twos. Four. We took away their cryptic commands. For three, we could take away their other detention sphere. And we only have the one bridge in our deck. I think... I guess we have two copies of bridge. We do care a little bit about those copies of Bridge and Liliana. Yeah, that's a good point. So you think we just don't want to play this Chalice? Or we can wait until we have the right card in play. So we're going to just end up using this Inventor's Fair to fetch, because they're probably about to try and destroy it. Uh, what do we need? We have, uh, I guess we want a Spyglass. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like, Spyglass on Jace is pretty good at this point. Um, right, we don't have any, like, Bottled Cloister is the closest that we have to a win condition. We already have it in play. Uh, Spyglass, we could also name like Field of Ruin to stop these Crucibles from going after our mana base. Um, but I think just turning off Jace, like Jace seems like the scariest card they have left. Um, yeah, confirmed.
guess I'm not sure whether I'm supposed to name Jace or name Field of Ruin. I guess they could just keep ghost quartering us, so hitting one of those things isn't that useful. Okay, so there's our underground river. Cast the spyglass. Okay. So we'll name Jace the Mind Sculpture. And I think I just play the sword for funsies. It will help with uh, any ensnaring bridge down the road. Right, because they're just on this Snapcaster beatdown plan. Did anyone catch, did they have a second detention sphere or only one? I looked at other things. All right, so we're going to try and get a bridge into play here. One, two, three. For ensnaring bridge. And then, I guess we need these chalices to be gone. I mean, we can take another hit from their Snapcaster. Ambush Viper doesn't... Oh, oh, right. It does not matter. Good call, Mike. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could chalice for three and just turn off the Liana at this point and turn off their detention sphere. That sounds fine. Yeah, they don't like this idea. Yeah, great. That is a great trade. <laughs> right, opponent seems to think it's a good idea, so it must be a good idea. Uh, it's possible I should have word for... Uh, another spyglass. Like, that's probably what I should do with it this turn, unless I just draw a spyglass. So, blue, blue, blue. One, two. We'll, we'll obscure what we're doing by tapping some extra artifacts. Great. I uh, don't need any of these things, but Sorcerer Spyglass sounds nice. So we'll name Field of Ruin. Play this Water Grave tapped. Call it good. So one, two, three, four. Yeah, sure they go squirted us. Right, so now now they're just uh they've run out of field of ruins. Now they're smashing ghost quarters. Um we do need another spyglass to like not have our mana base destroyed. So, right, they're anticipating finding a detention sphere here. Um, 
So I think we're going to ego them for detention sphere. I guess we'll play this river of tears. Still had one left. And just checking real fast. So they have no more win conditions. Oh, they have a Gideon of the Trials. Sure. Um, does Tezzeret beat Gideon of the Trials? He doesn't. So. Uh, Sistral says, Windows. Snipping tool is great for unmoored ego. You just screenshot the deck and leave the image open. Okay, I'll look into that. Play Dark Slick Shores. We have a whir. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. We got another Spyglass. On Ghost Quarter. My concern is like actually being able to task, cast Tesseret when we find him. They should have fired off their quarter before it resolves. So, okay, so they have the one Gideon. We have two Tesserits. If it comes to decking, we will deck. I'll play this. Like we're drawing two cards a turn, they're not. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's like a certain argument for casting this chalice on six. Yeah, we should. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we, right, we turn off our own Liliana's. But. Um, if they play that Gideon, they just don't have a tool to kill their Gideon. Alright, sweet. I think we're, we're home free here. We'll play a stupid, a bunch of stupid artifacts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we have enough. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that about my artifacts. I love them. Chalice for three seems good to deal with Gideon. I did cast Chalice on three. There's a Chalice for three right here. Um, right, so like, I guess the, the previous Ego we probably should have cast. Oh, fair. Yeah, I think the previous Ego we probably should have cast for like Negate. Um, instead of casting it for... Liliana, or uh, for Detention Sphere. Chalice of Three seems like a pretty big deal in this matchup. It is a little sad for our Lilianas, but we accept that. Witchbane Orb? I don't know why we still have a Witchbane Orb. We can get a second bridge so that if we name three, we have an extra word target. Damping Sphere. Yeah, everything here still seems fine. Having a second spell skate might be interesting, but they're just so likely to be turned off, it doesn't matter. Okay. Chalice looked really good there. Um, turn off their draw engine, and then like turn off their win conditions late. We'll keep this. 
we probably want this land. And we could draw like any land or any artifact that's cheap and still get to this Liliana on time. And we, we, we can do better. We get like three draw steps. Yeah. Alright, Opal. So we can get like turn two Liliana or turn two War. Turn two War is probably better, so then we don't have to discard our own War to Liliana. Like we can War for Thopter Foundry, unless they like drop a Stony Silence on us. Crack this, crack this. Opal becomes inert. And we will spy upon them. See what they have going on over there. Cryptic, Logic Knot, Teferi. I mean, we'll, we'll name Teferi since we know they have one, and right, he's he's scarier than Jace anyway. Um, I think we got a little unlucky to not draw another land here. Okay, we'll play the Foundry. I don't know, maybe we're supposed to keep the third land. Third land's pretty good. They do play like two copies of Stony Silence. But I think with the baubles, like, expectation should have been to draw another land by now. So we'll see if we can bait a counter spell here. I guess the problem is that they like Cryptic Command, counter the Chalice, bounce the Spyglass. Cast Tesseret, activate him. Uh, I guess then we, we still get to replay the Spyglass. So that doesn't work out that well for them. Oh, they, then they get to untap two lands and counter the Spyglass. I think, yeah, I think we're in a pretty bad spot here. Savage. No basic swamp. So now we're like just worlds away from being able to ego here. I mean, we do have 14 black, I guess 13 left black sources that aren't opals. I actually wonder if you're just supposed to like board out all the opals in this matchup. Like the matchup's so slow and. Like the opals are so heavily favored to get stony silenced. Maybe on the play they're worth it. But even then, I guess if we have any more worthwhile cards, we, we cut opals in this matchup. Hey, Bum Man, thanks for the follow. Uh, yeah, so we're just breaking on lands here. It's too bad. I feel like. We could have learned a lot more if uh, we weren't bricking. So they still have Logic Knot up. Um, let's see, if we draw land, we can Ego or Whirr. We probably try and Whirr on their turn and then Ego on our turn. them fate sealing us is going to make this uh, even worse. Even worse. Like, we're only a 20 land deck, and so, like, we need odds of double land. Meanwhile, they're sitting back on counter spells. Rough. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if we just kept that Dark Slick Shores, we'd be there. 
Maybe we have this bad keep. Or like a bad shuffle, right? Like if we have Liliana and Ego, it's probably a fine percentage play to not take the land. Bring the hands worth two in the bush. Well, it's just like, right, we knew we had like two baubles and, or I think we only had one in our hand at that point, but like we had three plays. We had Whirr and Liliana and like the fourth mana gets us to Tezzeret. So maybe the land's actually just actively good. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, because like Tezzeret is this huge source of card advantage. So even if we have an extra land, he does good things. So we're about to get jaced out. Oof. Yeah, all right, so we can't stop this chase. Huh. Interesting. As maybe a questionable mulligating decision, not just being results oriented, but like, yeah, Lily like demands black lands, so there aren't that many more to draw. I think mostly I was just thinking that that opal is going to reliably be a mana source. Like, right, if they just have like two stony silences, it takes a while for them to find one, but yeah, I think, I think maybe that's the wrong mulligan evaluation. Okay, this hand has one land, so we probably need to ship it. I think I'm also used to like playing with the lootings and I guess getting to like play a little looser. Like, right, you have more top decks that work out for you. So maybe just the way that I'm thinking is a little more optimistic than top decks might yield without cards like that. Okay, this hand, we don't have a second source for the Thopter Foundry. Really far away from triple blue, so even though we're is amazing, it's not what we want right now. We're mostly looking for this chalice to be good. All right, so we really need a bridge against Boggles. And... I guess we cast this, and this, and this. We'll cycle this ball as quickly as possible. In some matchups, you care about how many cards you have so that your bridge is effective against their creatures. But here, this ball is gonna get huge. They'll probably wind up with some random, like, one ones. But that's, um, like, we have the Thopter Foundry to deal with those. Those aren't usually a problem. It's just, it's the one massively enchanted creature that's always the real issue. All right, so we can Thopter Foundry off of this. We don't have a sword. So I think it's probably just better to chalice them. I think quite a few of their Umbras cost one, and so that's going to slow them down more. Uma Limited, oh yeah, <laughs> Ultimate Masters Limited right here. Getting to play this in Limited is super fun. Like, Slippery Boggles and Uncommon. Almost all the Umbras are in the set. There's no Core Spirit Dancer, but yeah, this is totally a limited deck that you can draft, and it's probably fun to play. As long as your opponent doesn't cast a, like, f Firewing Phoenix. Uh, you could be good. So, at this point, we're going to cast a Thopter Foundry. Our opponent doesn't have any main deck destroy effects, so this Welling Jar isn't going to do anything. And I think my plan is to turn the Welling Jar into a Thopter. I'm not ready to chump yet. They're only swinging for three. 
Uh, they do have auras that make it so that we can't block, so we don't just want to let them bash us forever. Um, I guess we need to pay the two life on this. Wait. Oh, I forgot to make the Thopter. I was like, what happened to my Thopter? Yeah, so I think we need to pay the life on this Watery Grave. And we're going to play this Ironworks. And unless I miss my mark, we are going to be able to then use that mana to get a Sword of the Meek and go infinite next turn. Yeah, infinite next turn. Uh, this would look way better if we had a Thopter. Uh, but I think it's still going to work out for us. Great. Lucky us, everything worked out. So there's a late Spirit Dancer and... I mean, uh, I guess they're a two-color deck. We might have just hit like a bunch of like snake umbras, or I'm trying to think of like what their other one CMC enchantments are. All right, so this Ironworks is going to sacrifice the Welding Jar, and then we're going to. Use this mana, and this mana. Go get a Sword of the Meek. And then we'll play the Inventor's Fair. And we'll eat the Chalice of the Void. Sword of the Meek. And then we can just go off here. Uh, you say, I mean, if you had one man enchantments, you should have cast one there. You still get to draw. Uh, that's true. But maybe the writing is on the wall at that point. So we can Ironworks, sacrifice the Thopter, and then do this a couple more times. So we could have uh, done that like a couple times and then sacrifice the other Metro Sphere to get like bridge or like a lock piece if we were in a matchup where that was relevant. Okay, so we don't need a Damping Sphere here. Spell Skates are just amazing. These Sorcerer Spyglasses don't do anything game one, but they're actually going to keep Seal of Primordium in game two, so they become quite good. Uh, they have Stony Silence, so like Welding Jar isn't very good. Uh, Revoker does hit their spell. We don't need Witchbane Orb. Ironworks. We're really expecting our combo. In fact, this is another matchup where we just take out the Foundries and the Swords. You can block them sometimes, but you can't always block. I'm not 100% sure that we're supposed to remove them here. But let's see. If we bring in Ego, Ego doesn't. I guess it doesn't really have anything good to hit. Maybe we do keep the Thopters and Swords in. It could buy us time. In which case, we probably do need to go infinite. Maybe Liliana is really good. Like, they could have Leyland of Sanctity, but they don't always hit it. We, we need our all-win condition first, so we need Tezzeret. This Chalice, is it good against them? They have some one mana enchantments, but not like a million of them. Torpor, Cage, those don't matter. Revokers, just another Spyglass. Liliana has to be right against them. Full prison in response to Sunny Sands? Okay, sure. Full prison. Full prison. So take these out, bring in Liliana, bring in the Revoker, bring in Welding Jars, in case 
like that's the right order with the seals. Uh, none of these do anything, so I think we just bring in an unworn ego. This should be fine. Oh shoot, we have an iron works still. We should have taken out the iron works and added an unworn ego. So, like, they have one aura that gives protection from creatures. Otherwise, the Thopters, like, do block for a long time. So, Spellskite is why I'm keeping this hand. If they don't have Stony Silence, Spellskite just means that I'm playing Boggles. And let me tell you, I like playing Boggles. So we'll get the Welding Jar out there. So if they have like a Seal of Primordium, we can protect our Spellskite. Like Spellskite's function is usually to protect some other artifact, but in this matchup, like, the thing you actually want is the Spellskite. So we'll get an island out here, we'll get the spell skate out. I think spell skate is better than chalice here since uh, stealing their enchantments is just better than stopping them stopping them from casting them. Uh, we'll Phyrexian Revoker on Seal of Primordium next turn. We should have played Chalice for one first, but interesting. I haven't seen them play Path to Exile post board in the past be before. So we'll play the Fair. We'll Chalice for one. And Revoker on Seal of Primordium. We're still in great shape, like, they don't have much going on yet, and we're at five mana to go get a bridge. <coughs> mm. It's obviously not what we like, but let's see, so we could walk with the Revoker and then Welding Jar. We could wait till next turn, but won't necessarily be able to block next turn. Oh, but it has trample, so we're only saving one damage. So I think we just let this through. And we, we gain a life this way, so it's the same. Same Z's. Alright, so if we don't die on this turn, which is kind of an if, like this Coronet. There's an enchantment that counts other enchantments, and that that could be brutal, but, huh. So yeah, we'll just take the six. I think we're in good shape. We just get to fetch our bridge here, and their guy's too big. Rest in peace doesn't matter at all. Uh, one thing I really like about this deck is people often go after your graveyard, and especially when you just transform to the full prison version, they're just like, whatever. Um, so we'll get our ensnaring bridge. Yeah, these inventor's fairs are so good. I tried playing with fewer inventor's fairs at some point, and it was just such an obvious mistake. Right. Even when you draw a two, two like that, it's rarely bad since you can tutor. And, you know, they're basically like Word of Invention 5 and 6. Speaking of which... So at this point we probably just want to Whir for like Bottled Cloister. Um, they're going to start trying to play just like 1-1s one -ones that are unenchanted to get in under the bridge. And 
and we just want to find our Tesseret and close out the game. Uh, bottle cloister. There might have been like some argument using the inventor sphere instead to find the bottle cloister because work can find you know an artifact in response to seeing what your opponent's doing and they could have some unexpected like nature's claim here hey, but even that is answered by welding jar right like there's they, there's always something they can do so we'll spyglass to see what they're up to <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, it's ethereal armor. Yeah, these chalices are actually quite good in this matchup. Uh, I'm gonna name Horizon Canopy. Horizon Canopy just lets them dig deeper into their deck. I, I think we've got this like locked up, but you never know if they have. I don't know, creeping corrosion. And so just stopping them from digging deeper seems like the right thing. I should probably even sacrifice this Inventor's Fair to get a Welding Jar. Right, I guess not not anymore, but... Yeah, so, Mike, I like the call of going full prison here. They play so many hateful enchantments. And just playing a second Opal doesn't really do anything for us. it's possible like getting a second bridge is the right defensive line at this point All right, so we have Liliana I guess she's fine as a win condition here I did not bring in their Layla Sanctity cool uh, yeah that's fine Liliana's looked okay so far like she's she's no um, Gear per ether grid. Like grid seems like it's better, but I'm not sure if it's worth playing red just for grid. Uh, so the 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 salvations forums guys are all um, pretty pretty keen on like Liliana as maybe the next best win condition, alternate win condition like Tezzeret, grid. It might even be that grid's better than Tezzeret. They do different things. Uh, and then Liliana. There's also some talk about Ashiok. But Ashiok seems a little worse than Liliana. Since Liliana, like, has an immediate impact on the board. Um, I don't think we can keep this for land reasons. This one we can keep, though. This is, like, yeah, 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 yeah. This is a turn one Thopter Foundry. And we have the sword on top. So we'll, we'll crack this bauble. Uh, we don't need it to keep our mocks turned on. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Thoughtseize is too slow. You can have this other Thopter Foundry, though. Uh, so ideally, like we're going to crack this bauble, and the hope is if we hit a land along with this sword, we're in a great place. Double sword is, you know, fine. If they make us discard the other sword, of course, like it will make our Thopters even more powerful. Um, so four color Death Shadow. Yeah, getting the Foundry down under the Stubborn Denial is a pretty big deal. Like they just, there's not really much they can do about it. Let's see. Uh, if we cast Chalice, they won't be able to Death Shadow. They won't be to stubborn denial. You don't really need those things. 
but our chance of like dying to team or battle rage goes way down. We can't cast lightning bolt. I think it's worth taking a turn off of making Thopters to turn off a lot of their deck. Uh, Mike says, I wonder if playing some sort of balance for Resolve Stony Silence might be cool. Uh, I, so I think the best answer to Resolve Stony Silence, if you just want to get rid of one, is Abrupt Decay, because then when you're playing against Blue-White Control, um, they can't counter it. And otherwise, I think Nih like Nihiri is the next best thing if you're actually trying to destroy it, since Nihiri can, you know, like, kill creatures and... Oh, I guess if you're talking about straight lethal back. Hey, James. Uh, the experiment is going pretty well. Uh, I thought Chalice was going to be useful in fewer matchups than it's ending up being useful. So we'll use the jar here. And happily discard a Sword of the Meek. Uh, yeah, this experiment's pretty nice. The Chalice is relevant in more matchups than I thought. Like, we we played against a Boggles player and cast a Chalice, and they just did nothing for a bunch of turns. And I think we didn't really realize that, uh, like, Ethereal Armor costs one. A lot of their Umbras cost one. And, uh, you know, in the control matchup, there's often an issue where, let's see, I think we just want to take five from the Tarmogoyf and kind of maximize our, our Thopters. Like we have two mana to create chumps with next turn. Welling Jar is pretty great here. Uh, but like against the control matchup, you get to turn off all of their cantrips. And then also what I didn't realize is that you get to turn off some of their win conditions. Like if you cast Chalice for six mana, so you get X equals three. It turns off like they usually have like one Gideon and some detention spheres. And uh, you know, like I even fantasize about X equals four and getting like Cryptic Command and Jace. Um, so like I think Chalice gives you a lot more like relevant pieces that lock out the control deck. And I, I worried that we we're going to be a lot less consistent. But so far, I mean, we've just been lucky, but it seems like we've been very consistent. Uh, Spyglass, they sometimes bring in some Liliana's here. We probably want to keep in like one Spyglass. But we want these spell skites a lot more. They have a lot of destroy effects. Um, Bridge is good against them. Their guys are all huge. We don't really need the Bottled Cloister. And by the time the Witchbane Norm comes online, our hand is already wrecked. Tezzeret. Tezzeret might even be a little slow against them. I mean, maybe Liliana's where it's at. They don't have that many threats, and we can make them discard their own like counter spells. This we might not want. I mean, they play Liliana on the Lost Hope so that we can spike glass for that. Seems okay. This seems good. We don't really need to go infinite on them with Ironworks. Like, a little attrition is usually fine. So maybe we can find room for a Tezzeret. The Tezzeret's really slow. Maybe we should just have Bottled Cloister. Since we can tutor the Bottled Cloister if we want the source of card advantage. Yeah, that seems fine. Oh, Grapdigger's Cage is kind of good against them. They have Snapcasters. We should bring in Torpor Orb, though, because it costs two. Okay. Um. You know, if, like, I feel like we haven't played any of the matchups where the changes we've made should make the deck worse, like spirits or humans. Or 
even like hardened scales, even though we still have four pithy needle effects main, they cost more. So I feel like they might nut us out with like ravagers a little bit more often. But uh, I guess, right, the, the general verdict is it's performing better than I'd expected. Um, I guess they don't have thoughts used because they didn't cast it. But I don't want these. These zeros are both pretty useful. Maybe the mox is less useful. Yeah. Hey, Kung Fu. I think, I think you might have been the person who pushed me over the edge on trying Chalice. So this is tough. I'm guessing they take the Ensnaring Bridge. But they have so few threats, I could see them also taking Liliana. Yeah. All right, if we draw like a zero casting cost artifact, and can just cast Liliana on the next turn. That seems like it's scary for them. Yeah, I guess I should like Liliana is also part of the experiment, like in the sideboard, and Liliana's looked really good. Um, like against Storm, getting the kill there. You know, Electromancers and Brawls, I think, slow them down. And then, like, being able to attack their hand is obviously frustrating for them. And, you know, here they, like, I generally think of War of Invention and Bridge as, like, premium, nearly unbeatable cards in this matchup. So I guess we can only whir for not enough. So even though I think I'm casting this into a Stubborn Denial, like the fact that they took Liliana over whir bridge is just like mind bending to me. Ancient Grudge. Sure. Grudge is pretty nice. Uh, I guess that's why we want Graft Digger's Cage, even though it costs a weird amount. Alright, we'll, we'll bring in Graft Digger's Cage for game three. Um, going after Liliana is just totally wild to me. So they get to Thoughtseize one whir, destroy the bridge, and then we don't have enough permanence to whir for another bridge. It's a nice line of play for them. This deck doesn't usually have Grudge, but obviously they can. So we'll play the Shores this turn so we can... Uh, we probably... yeah, we have to play it in that order. We really want a bridge. We don't have anything to go with the Thopter Foundry. Death Shadow. They're not wholly stubborn denial mana, which is great. Let's play River Tears, play the Vauble. And then we can work for a bridge. And. You know, we're still vulnerable to them top decking or having like Colgan's Command or Trophy. Right, they have a lot of these effects. Chalice seems like an upgrade for this matchup. Like being able to turn off their traverses seems like a big deal, and their shadows. Let's say Meyer is not a very scary top deck. I guess it does let them deal three damage themselves so that their shadow is going to be huge. So 
I guess uh, Charles was Charles Dupont was on. He was suggesting maybe like cutting a few spyglasses and maybe like a chalice to play ideas unbound. There's probably some like math to be done to figure out. what mix of cards like right like is it actually better to have like the fourth willing jar or if you have more card draw effects uh is it better to have like fewer but more card draw um so i think i think if this actually ends up looking good we have to do that kind of analysis i don't think there's any card that kills us here so i think we take this hit because like the death shadows are only gonna get bigger Yay. So we'll draw that, play a sword. And now I think we're in super good shape. Even if they counter it, we can sacrifice this opal and get the sword back. And we actually have six lands up, which makes seven power. So we can theoretically just kill our opponent next turn. I guess we need to create one chump blocker, so... We could take a risk and block with the spell sky, but I think there's no reason to do that. Like, I think we just give them an extra draw step. Yeah. Well, that's... Alright, so 4-1, pretty solid. Yeah, we need to play around surgical, that's for sure. Solid experiment. Um, let's see. Do I change anything or just? I think, right? Like five five matches is not really enough to see whether this is a good or bad set of changes. I think we should probably just keep playing with it to get more data. But you know, after the first run, I'm not feeling like I should be playing the spell skites main over the welding jars, despite my love of spell skite. I think we really do need the jars for curve reasons here. Like, not only does it keep the curve lower for bridge, but it also increases the chance that we have two mana on turn one to chalice fast. Um, Liliana does seem like... I don't, I, I don't have a burning desire to like try Ashiok instead. And... I don't think there's a two mana card that does anything like Cage, so I think we're just you know, committed to cage. So this looks like we should just run this back. Let's see what we're up against. So uh, Kung Fu Geek, I know you said that it was like last weekend or the weekend before you got to play in a win a box. Did you end up going? If so, how did that go? Right, we won the die roll, we like to play first, yes. Um, yeah, this sounds great. It has Thopter Foundry and Bridge, and it can whir for the other half of our combo. Looks like everything's going pretty right here. Um, do I want to crack this bobble? Probably not. Like, as long as we have plays and lands, I don't really want to crack it. So you cast Chalice on one. That's probably going to make this other deck miserable. Like, they're probably playing a Phoenix deck, and they have, like, I don't know, 12, 16 one-drops. I think we'll Chalice them. Historically, I'm not 100% sure whether, like, I would usually just Thopter Foundry here. But since I don't have a third land... Oh, interesting. Watery Grave. <laughs> Stubborn Drop, okay. Um, we can't pay. Well, I'd much rather lose the Chalice 
the softer foundry. I feel pretty happy with that outcome. I don't know. I guess Scalding Tarn is... I just see so many things in the ice decks that I just assume that's what it is. Alright, so Kung Fu Geek says... The only two mana cards that's like Cage is Yixla Drailer. Fair. If it's not an artifact... If it's not an artifact, we don't care. Um, by a reasonable call. Uh, he lost to... Kung Fu Geek lost to Humans and Tron. That's that's tough. You said that you played badly. I think you can lose against humans, but humans is usually a great matchup. Tron, I think, is much harder. Like you have to know exactly what you're doing. All right, so they're probably holding a stubborn denial up, and their death shadow. They could like cycle a wraith and then you know counter this with denial. It's just a hard counter, but. You know, I feel like when you can, you you want to play around uh, Stubborn Denial. Like, even if they only are likely to have three copies. So next turn, we can Sword of the Meek, and if they counter the Sword of the Meek, it's actually, we don't have another artifact to sacrifice to trigger it. And they're going to hold up one blue again. Angler. So our options are to play bridge. Uh, if we play this bridge, it just blanks them. Or sword. Yeah, sword can only block one of them and can like lose to battle rage. So we're just going to play this as staring bridge. If they have the stubborn denial. Like, sure. So, we might be dead here. If we're not dead, though, we might have a chance to, like, draw a land, play a sword, have it resolve, and then, like, have blockers for both of these guys. But my guess is they're going to figure out how to get this Death Shadow, like, three more power. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> it's like, what are they doing? They need a guy to dismember. Cool. Stubborn Denial is definitely like the hardest card out of this deck to deal with. Um, our deck plays very well against Thoughtseize because we like, like to play Hellbent and like draw very well off the top of our deck, but counter spells can be much, much harder. Um, Spyglass is basically a blank in this matchup. I think it's just an actual blank. Liliana seems very good in this matchup. Witchbane Orb and Ironworks seem unnecessary. I do want these Spell Skites. I can absorb Tumor Battle Rage and like sometimes it just blocks. They're also going to have a lot of destroy effects post board. Um, Chalice seems great against them. Don't need a Damping Sphere. We saw an ancient grudge. I'm curious. Hey, Tugatog. Pretty good. Um, we ran one league earlier. Went 4 1 in the league. Chalice seems like it's pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if it's worth like not playing Faithless Looting, but it's not awful. Like It's surprisingly good in a large number of places. I think I'm going to play one Tezzeret. I think it's better that... Oh, we should play one Turp or Like, turn off their Snapcasters. Yeah, that seems better. Okay. Um, it was particularly, like, surprisingly good against Control, because we got to, like, Chalice for 6, so X equals 3, and, like, turn off, like, Gideon and Detention Sphere, which... Um, yeah, you know, it, it just gives us like one more tool to turn off a lot more of their deck. So we have a, a welding jar here, and welding jar is gonna protect 
our, um, you know, probably bridge that we're going to play at this point. And let's see, next turn we'll have five permanents. So that's not quite enough to work for a bridge. So we're probably going to work for like another welding jar. Uh, do we want cage? I think ancient grudge is not normal. But maybe maybe we should just be playing with it anyway, since they could be playing it. Especially here, if we just like word for cage, that might be nice. Um, so what should we word for here? Thought scour. Or do we just not work for anything if we don't have to? Because we we have this river of tears, so we can just work for a bridge next turn and have a second or available. That's probably right. Like spell skite can die to fatal push if they have it, so I don't want spell skite. Yeah, I think we'll just hold up. All right, we have Leyline, so... Like, if, if they hadn't played Leyline, getting Thopter Foundry the last turn would have been a reasonable line of play. So I think we're going to work on their upkeep, or if they tap out here. Um, they could draw Stubborn Denial any time. Yeah, I think we just want to do this on their turn. Probably on their end step, so that they can like overcommit their mana this turn. Interesting. So if they have a stubborn denial, they just get to counter our were. If we wait, if we wait, we can draw another land and play around one stubborn denial. I guess we'll wait. Dark Slick Shores. Like, they're not drawing many more cards than us. They are drawing a few more cards than us. I think here we're going to get Snapcaster into Thought Scour. So they're going to be tapped out and we can wear for Bridge. We'll be rewarded for our patience. Wow, they didn't cast the Thought Scour. All right. So they're also being hyper patient. Yeah, I mean, very crafty. I can respect that. But now we have the one extra mana we need to pay. Right, we could just go Spell Skate Sword of the Meek here. and then have tons of artifacts for war. But then we could conceivably get messed up by like some thought seizes. I'm pretty impressed with not casting the thought scour there. Like that's a super, super thoughtful play by the opponent. Yeah, some of them side and negate, some of them side and spell pierce. Some of them side in Dispel. Like, they could just have Is It Charm. Oh, I think no. Is It Charm isn't really in the range of this deck. That's more of a Phoenix deck card. Alright, so the real key is we just want to cast these words before they have a 5 5 in play. Because then they're just, you know, hard counters. Um, 
humans got Kataki out of game two and three, and you had no answer. Uh, I assume you brought in grid, and you just didn't draw your grids. That can happen, I feel like. Although, I feel like you can also just get bridge and be able to pay for it, even though you lose most of your artifacts. But yeah, like, an early Kataki is really hard to deal with. So I can see why you would, you know, lose against humans if if things go wrong. Um, Tron is right. Like game one, you're a huge dog. Did you have like the full set of Unmoored Egos, or are you playing fewer Unmoored Egos, Geek? Because I feel like I think. I think I'm like 7 0, 8 0. I think I've like lost against Tron maybe once since coming up with the Unmoored Ego plan. No egos. Ah, yeah. That's everything. Like against Tron. Against Tron, you just have this great post board configuration. I think it's actually the same post board configuration you end up playing against KCI. Or you're like. You go on the full prison plan, so you bring in, like, Egos and Tezzeret to, like, build more prison pieces. You take out one bridge, because the deck isn't that aggressive, but it does have some creatures, like, Tron will bring in Thought on Seers. I guess in this version we get to play Chalice against them post-board, which is amazing. But you don't need Thopters, you don't need Swords, and you don't need the Ironworks or the Witchbane Orb. And then you play like spell skates because they have all these nature's claims and like world breaker and then revoker. Now I guess having access to Liliana might change what's right. Like maybe you don't need as many ensnaring bridges with Liliana. Or Liliana has a weird effect against Tron where like if you've unward egoed them or word for Damping Sphere so that their Tron is off. They have these super expensive cards that they can't cast, and Liliana can just make them discard all of them. She was pretty, pretty strong. Um, I could see maybe going down like one Snaring Bridge to get like one Liliana in there. Uh, I think maybe our opponent is back from being disconnected. Okay, so it's our main phase. Um, yeah, it, Ego is just a super revolutionary card for this archetype. I feel like prior to Ego, there were some combo matchups that were very hard, like Tron and Titan Shift. And even, like, you can lose the Amulet Titan deck. But, like, once you have Ego, you just have... And it's even, like, a good card against Control. So much flexibility. So I think our opponent's like just on hard aggro control right now. Like they're just going to try and... So that's going to be one of our words. <laughs> we could try and Witchbane Orb here. That seems like we get two for one if they counter it and then they take away the other word. Um, so we'll, we'll try and worry before they get to see our hand. I don't think waiting gets us any benefit at this point. I guess we should leave the... We should actually leave the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to leave a mana. So we'll pay for this. So they had the card we were playing around, which always feels nice. They have two copies of it, which feels less nice. Um, I th think maybe, like, I don't know, I guess maybe we we're supposed to play, like, the Spell Skate and Sword of the Meat two turns ago. So that we had the permanence that we needed to... to were. It's probably right. We probably should have played those cards. 
Uh, no need to pay here. So if they have, I guess, let's see, like lightning bolts. That's fine. I don't like turning their lightning bolt into a, a live card. I mean, maybe I'm just supposed to take two damage there. I'm probably just supposed to take two damage there. Or pay the two life to just equip the sword. As it is, we'll, we'll welding jar it. Yeah. So that it seems like they don't have any of their big threats here. Thoughts use. So play this. We'll equip the sword to the spell sky. So we have a five turn clock. And we don't think that they have anything. I guess we're supposed to bash. I'm not sure that this spell skit's gonna get there. Another, okay. With another thought, Snapcaster, I don't like that attack. But, you know, we can take four, get on to 12, and then just leave our spell skit back on defense. Um, you know, right, it's possible they were sitting there without, like, much gas. Now that looks super wrong. So we need a top deck here. We need, like, bridge or... Thopter Foundry would help a little bit, but not a lot. Inventor's Fair would... Would have been fine. We could have actually activated it and played a bridge. Uh, so here I think we actually have to chump block with the spell skite. Yeah. Oh, I guess 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, but we just have to chump block with the spell skite. So now even if we draw the bridge that we need, if they have like a Colgan's command, we're still in trouble. So there's our war for bridge. And yeah, another ley line. Alright, so you can see like we should have taken the two damage and not exposed our welling jar to danger. At this point, we'll just sacrifice this opal to gain a life. And then we'll play the other opal. We'll equip up this thopter. And if things go awry here, we can make enough thump thopters to like chump block for a turn. This is... All right, our graveyard is really, really, really dead. Uh, this is a pretty great draw for us. Like, now we're not just dead to, like, one Colgan's command. Um, I guess they're, <laughs> they're close enough to dead that getting the sword off of our Thopter is a big deal. Yeah, we can kill them here. In fact, pretty quickly. Like, I probably was supposed to sacrifice the sword to make another Thopter. Yeah. Um, having your graveyard taken away is actually not that big of a deal. Stony Silence is a big deal, but a lot of these decks, it's Staring Bridge locks the game down, and like a couple Thopters is all you need. Um... 
So we'll bring in the Graph Digger's Cage. Even though it's a non bo with the. Um, it is a non bo with the Chalice. Like, I want to see just how many like Ancient Grudge decks there are in like the Death Shadow. Force you, Death Shadow. Like, I'm really used to seeing a braid and Colgan's Command and Assassin's Trophy, and they just have so much artifact destruction that having Grudge seems excessive. I guess two copies in a top eight. All right. I will respect it as a real thing that's likely to happen. Um... I guess we get to Chalice for one on turn one. Like, this is what we were playing the deck to do. Thoughtseize obviously breaks it up, but they don't have Thoughtseize here. It's pretty nice. I assume they'll take Chalice with Thoughtseize? Kozilek. I still assume they take Chalice. Like, it turns off Death Shadow and, like, a ton of their other cards. Chalice is absurd in this matchup. And this is, I think, like, a relatively difficult matchup for the other configuration of the deck. So this, like... This feels like it might be a positive matchup with Chalice. And that's what, really what I'm looking for in this testing process is I'm you know comparing this build of the deck to the best build of the deck that we currently have and let's see uh, so if we bobble them we can't were for two next turn so I think I'm actually gonna save the bottle a turn we're not under a lot of pressure and like, what I don't want to have happen is us draw Whirr, which is one of our best cards, and then not to be able to cast it for something useful. And then, like, lose it to, like, Snapcaster on Thoughtseize or something. Angler. So now, though, we can Whirr for Bridge if we find one. And so I want to double my chances of drawing were or bridge. So cloister is pretty good in that it lets us draw two cards a turn. We have protection for it. Yeah, I think cloistering here is pretty strong. I guess chalice for one though stops them from casting death shadow or like ever stubborn denialing us again. I think we just need to draw more cards though. We need to find a bridge stat. All right, like they can't thought seize anything while we have the cloister out. And we have a jar and a spell skate to protect it, so it's not very likely that we're gonna lose it. This is like this protects us from Colgan's command. I'm gonna take this five. I don't want to lose the spell skate just yet. Like, if I draw a sword, it can actually just block the angler. Yeah, Chalice should help the burn matchup considerably. Alright, so I want to... I guess they just either have a counter or they don't here. So we'll Chalice on one. I'm guessing it's about to get Stubborn Denial. Yeah. Uh, play the Dark Slick Shores. And I guess we're taking another five from the Angler. Wait. With the Battle Rage, it does ten, but we can redirect to the Spell Sky, so that's not a consideration yet. Oof, these are some pretty terrible draws. 
I think we can take one more hit from the angler and not have it be an awful idea. Uh, maybe we're supposed to chalice first. It's a pretty hard call. Like, knowing that they have a bunch of denials and an angler out, and they have snapcasters potentially. All right, ley line. All right, them tapping out is great. Didn't really draw anything to punish them. I mean, we did get this cage. I wouldn't exactly call that punishment for them. So we're gonna have to chump lock this spell skite this turn. And we'll sacrifice the welding jar to protect it, since we might need to chump lock again next turn. In general, I value the welding jar a little bit more than the spell skite. Like in terms of things that can protect our things from being destroyed. But in this case, you know, obviously the spell skate's the only thing between us and this Gourmag Angler. Uh, so another jar. Right, and it, it does make drawing more jars worth more chump blocks. So they don't have Stubborn Denial, they don't have Snapcaster. Or I guess they could have Snapcaster now, because we have the cage. Alright, cage doing decent work there. So Snapcaster's going to kill us in three turns. I guess the, the Welding Jar and Spell Skate give us about the same amount of time on the Angler. Yeah, we can chump block the Angler next turn. So we have basically two turns to draw something here. And we have to draw it before they find a counter spell. Uh, Colgan's Command will also just wreck us. But we haven't seen a Colgan's Command from them at all. I mean, maybe there's some weird build without Colgan's Command that seems. Very unlikely wishful thinking. Alright, so this is good news. We have a chalice, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we potentially have ten mana. We could chalice for one, we could also chalice for three. If we chalice for three. Maybe they don't play Colgan's Command. All right, they have Grudge, potentially, Liliana, Traverse, and uh, let's see, let's, I'm, I'm looking at a few Death Shadow decks to try and decide what exactly I'm supposed to care about. I think, I think Colgan's Command is standard. Two copies, yeah. Chalice on three, turn off Colgan's command. That's just, that just seems like the thing to do. Okay, so we're going to Chalice for three. One, two, three. Done. And then we're going to uh, whir for a lot. One, two, three. All right, so this is a six CMC spell, so it's not about to get countered. Again, Snaring Bridge. Play Mox. Keep this one. Cool. So now they can't pull against command. They can't attack. Uh, we have, we can redirect on the spell skite without taking damage. 
So we can still die to like multiple bolts. Uh, the welding jar gives us, now we're like way out of the woods. <laughs> Stubborn now. All right, we're not way out of the woods. Huh, maybe Chalice on 1 would have been almost as good as Chalice on 3. They do have so many 1s. Alright, so we can Foundry here. And Sword. And we can equip the spell sky with the sword. And I think we're just actually supposed to sacrifice this opal to itself immediately, but that's enough for them. Alright, we did it. We imprisoned them. This matchup feels much more powerful with Chalice, and I would consider this to be an unfavorable matchup before. So that's pretty interesting. I think it's also going to make the KCI and Tron matchups much better, and those are my worst matchups by a gazillion. Um, so the real question is, like, does this configuration hurt us enough in the like humans and spirits matchups? And like, it's probably good against the burn matchup. Like, Chalice seems like it should be good against burn, but like, I don't know. It could be that not having spell skype main is actually worse than having Chalice main. Because, like, often burn just, like, it's game one, at least, it's, like, the Eidolon kills you. But I guess we can Chalice for one on turn one. That's pretty incredible. This has to be better against, like, all the Phoenix decks. I used to play Red, White, Nahiri. They can't be the Chalice on one and two. Uh, okay, fair. So maybe it's just awesome. Maybe maybe Chalice is the truth. Um, I don't like the double opal, but I do like everything else going on with this hand. I think it's better than mulliganing to six. Especially our opponent mulligans. Um, right, like double moxes can conceivably be multiple mana sources. Prioritize Chalice on two if possible. Really? Against Burn? They have so many ones. Yeah, I guess... Well, Revelry, they only have games two and three. But yeah, that, that makes sense. Two post-board, certainly. I just... Uh, it really depends on what we've played out of our own hand as well. We have so many twos. Like, I wouldn't want to turn off, say, like, Thopter Foundry, because then we wouldn't have a path to victory. And it's also worth a lot of life. Alright, so we've got either Spirits or Humans match up here, so we get to... kind of see... see how bad it is to have increased our curve and gotten rid of Faithless Looting. Um, you know, bridge on three is going to be solid. Uh, if it's spirits, they're going to have their counter magic up in time. Like, they could have a Queller available. Um, let's see, the sword is a pretty good pick up. So next turn we can try and bridge. If they have spell quill up, they'll exile it. But instead of doing that, we could try and war for Thopter Foundry. Oh no, we don't have... We need another blue source to be able to war. Uh, Opal seemed lackluster in this version. 
Interesting. Tell me, Brian, why you think Opal's been lackluster. I feel like, um, right, it doesn't turn on as often, and that makes sense. But, like, it still feels like it's a mana source most of the time. And getting a card out of our hand for these bridges is pretty strong. It might be that playing four is too many in this version. Right, so they tapped out that vial isn't going to save them. Uh, playing our second opal doesn't get us anywhere. I guess if they play a lord it could help. Um, so do I just want to throw an opal away? I think we don't die to a lord. Oh, I guess they could have two lords, right? They, they could play three lords. Alright, we should probably pitch this. We have plenty of mana anyway. And this bridge will just win the game by itself. See, Opal was awesome. I just got to one with, like, one fourth of a one with nothing with it. So now, like, they can flash in, like, one lord, but if they flash in two lords, they can't really hit us, like, they won't be able to attack. The Mausoleum Wanderer can get big if they, like, flash guys in, but I think these guys can't be bigger than 3-3, three, three. so they could theoretically hit us for, like, 9. They could conceivably kill us if they have the exact right spirits. They could hit us for 12 because they can flash in a lord after they attack. Yeah, but they, they didn't flash in a small lord the previous turn, so I think I think we're good. I think we are out of the woods. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 permanents. So we can't go get a bald cloister. But we can play this ironworks. I guess we don't, we don't have another artifact to play. The Ironworks doesn't actually help us power stuff out of our hand. Okay, perfect. We drew this. Spell Queller can't actually... Oh, they have the Mausoleum Wanderer. Oh, uh, if we were for Foundry... One, two, three, one, two. Yeah, that's actually pretty nice. We'll do that. We'll see if they activate this vial and we do it in response with this Mausoleum Wander trigger on the stack. One, two, three, one, two. So we're gonna get Thopter Foundry. They can sacrifice this to make us pay one now, but. Yeah, good suggestion, Geek. So, and, and now I think they're just like totally locked out. Being able to make two blockers just means that even with ether vial shenanigans, you know, they, they just can't have enough power here. Guys, the same draft is pretty good. Still not enough though. That is a lot more power being able to attack. But I think since we get to go up to 14 and chump block two of these guys, I think it's still not enough. I think uh, I've seen versions where they play a lot of Geist, and those do seem like the scariest versions, since Geist can attack with like fairly low amounts of mana, or like fairly low amounts of cards, but still present a lot of power. going to be, but I'm certain I need to make another Thopter, so on the off chance that something coming out of that vial is bad, I'm going to make this Thopter. I guess it's slightly bad if it's like a Reflector Mage, but I don't think Spirits is going to play a Reflector Mage on me. They get it! <laughs> Alright, it's a Reflector Mage. 
Um, so this is, right, it would have been better to wait. Because then I could have killed their Geist forever. Alright, so they're dealing 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That's fine, so we're just going to kill one of these selfless spirits. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, I know that, I guess it's a thing that's happening more often now. But it still seems rare. Yeah, so, sweet. We didn't even need to show them our ironworks. But we probably wouldn't play the ironworks because we'd be afraid of Spell Queller. So let's see. Which way we don't need? Ironworks we don't really need. Our expectation is that they're going to cast like Stony Silence and Rest in Peace. And our combo is going to turn off. So like the ability to go infinite isn't that good. I'm not chaining a bunch of spells together. Battle Cloister is like a key card here. It um... Like... It... When, when we have hands like that, where they have, like, a couple guys that are small, Cloister lets us, you know, shut off all of their guys attacking. Uh, we're going to want these spell skites. <laughs> it's going to help with noble hierarchs uh, attacking under the bridge. And it also helps with, like, Knight of Autumn. Um, the Turper Orb stops their Knights of Autumn. Like, even when we're under Stony Silence and can't use Spell Sky to protect them. And... Now, historically, I would have brought in... Uh, Grid. And this is this might be where, like, Grid hurts us. Oh, yeah, yeah, Chalice is not great here. Nor is Spyglass. As, so, this is a matchup where I would have brought in Grid in the past to deal with um, Kitaki or like Gaddock Teague, but we don't have those, we don't have grids anymore. So I think I'm actually going to bring in Unmoored Egos to like name those cards before our opponent can draw them. And I think we're just going to bring in like two Welling Jars as additional protection from Knights of Autumn. Oh, we, never mind. We, we want the first Grafdigger's Cage. Um, I guess they don't have green, so they don't have company. I guess we don't need it. Eh, we should bring it just in case. It doesn't really hurt us much. Uh, we don't know if they have collected company or... It's collected company, really, that you wanted against. It looks like they're just a straight blue-white version. But also, if they're a straight blue-white version, there's many fewer scary things they can do. But yeah, they're probably banned. So this hand... We just want to go, like, turn two spell skite. Turn three. I guess, I mean, turn three ego is not a very good start, but we could, like, ego for Kataki or... <sighs> Kataki's probably the scariest thing they can do. Again, if they're just a blue-white version, they're a lot more likely to have multiple Katakis. Did you go for Stony? Oh, sure. If they haven't played Stony yet, yes. I'm so used to them not resolving Stony that I'm not even thinking about the ability to get rid of it outright. Yeah, getting rid of Stony would be sweet. And we don't have a Whirr, and we're short on lands, so I'm just... I think I crack this bobble immediately. Especially if they stone new sign. Oh, uh, rattle chains, sure. Uh, I guess we get one more turn to see whether or not we need a land. Like, we might draw a land. So, I, I think I don't crack the bobble yet. I want my bridges to be better. And my words to be better. Uh, 
Uh, there's a small argument for casting sword there, because then if we draw were, we could were for foundry and then start going off from there. Um, because they have Knight of Autumn, potentially, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to like expose my control piece. Oh, I was supposed to crack a bobble there and then just got lucky. Blue, black. So we can go for Stony Silence. We know they don't have it because they didn't... Uh, I guess we don't know for sure that they don't have it. I mean, and it's what we should name. Like, we have protection from Knight of Autumn. There's probably a Lord they could play here. Oh, sure, they're just going to counter it. That's fine. Uh, right, there's probably a Lord that they can play here that would be scarier than Stony Silence. I guess, like, uh, probably, like, Draws goal, Captain. <laughs> Just the Wanderer aggro draw. Right, so we'll look at our own hands, see if we have a land on top. We don't. So I'm pretty comfortable just burning all these baubles to draw cards. Especially since we can't really whir with these Wanderers out. The Chirper Orb does stop the Wanderer trigger, which is pretty nice. Uh, so I'm going to prioritize casting it over, let's say, another spell sky. Um, that might with two wonders at this represents probably like a whole turn's worth of damage savings. Um, these guys might just like aggro us out. Like we need another land and a word to get a bridge here. They're kind of mana screwed, which is working in our favor. I think we need to crack this to find the cards we need, even if our bridge is gonna be much worse if we draw one right now. I think these guys are so small, we almost need like bridge plus cloister. So three, one, two, three. So we could were, but we'll just get countered by a, a Wanderer. And that seems like it's going to be true next turn, too. But if we have another permanent, they'd have to sacrifice both Wanderers. They could just flash in a guy at any time, which makes the Wanderers worth even more. They think they're out of creatures that they can cast on the mana that they have. I think we still need to try and cast this Whirr on their turn. Let's see. I guess if we have another land and they don't have anything, this could work. So maybe we need to save the Whirr, find a mana source. I think, all right, so, oh. Uh, do I need to? Cast more permanence. Yes. Okay, so we're going to cast more permanence so that we only need to tap three of our lands for were. Oh, we could also like were for two if we have the sword out. So yeah, our current plan is probably like were. Oh, I guess were for two or three doesn't matter. But were for two might be better. These guys are so small, bridge isn't going to stop them. survived a turn. So we're going to cast this on our opponent's upkeep. Because we think that they have no more spirits. Oh, the Torpor Orb stops their guy from growing anyway. So... This shouldn't work. I think they should just kill us here. Like, 
like they might think that we're trying to get a bridge because we chose x equals three. Oh, it hasn't looked for bridge might have been a good line. <laughs> I do have to say, like, the games that I've lost the most against spirits are games where they have... I think, I think maybe the right line was Tez and look for a Thopter Foundry. Um... Because, like, Thopter Foundry would actually work and bridge. The, they, their guys were all too small. Yeah, I think Kung Fu Tez might have been the right path. Like, if we'd drawn another land, that line would have been fine. But Tez gets, like, two shots at finding a bridge. Or a Foundry. That's, like, ten cards after we haven't seen one. I, I think I think that the Tez line looks good. I mean, you could plus one Tez and then they kill Tez, but then you're, you just bought yourself a turn. Hmm. We didn't see green again. So maybe, maybe they're not green. If that's, if they're not green, the spell skates don't really do much. Maybe we keep the spyglasses for wander, like, and then just play. We saw a Horizon Canopy, but they just play that to cycle. So like, there's no guarantee that it even represents anything. I'm just gonna play these two jars. Like we, we we played two games without seeing a third color. Like, and obviously that game they were mana screwed. But like, we don't even need to hit. Um, company most of the time, because like, orb and bridge kind of do everything we care about. Okay, this hand should be great. Um, you know, they could have spell quiller to eat one bridge, but the chance of them having spell quillers to eat both bridges are pretty low. Um, and since we're on the play, we have one fewer card. They're going to get fewer attack steps. Alright, so they do have green, and they just got absurdly unlucky. Twice. Alright, if they have Stony Silence, like, taking out the spell skate, I mean, the biggest deal here is now Hierarch being able to attack on your bridge without spell skate blocking. I probably should have played the spell skates instead of the welding jars. Like at least the first spell skates have a tutorable blocker. Uh, rest in peace, sure. Yeah, because like being able to assemble spell skate plus sword of the meek so that you can just block hierarch forever is pretty huge. So we can. And they have kind of the rest of their deck covered. They only have like three Knights of Autumn. So we're most like... I guess, right, they could like runner runner a bunch of Knights of Autumn. Valley is fine. Chalice on one. I guess. Like, it stops them from... I mean, they can't cast more Hierarchs, but if they have Collected Company, they can still find more Hierarchs. I think Childs for one is not where we'd want to be here. Right, so there's the Dark Slick Shores. We could play the second bridge, or we can play... The spyglass. Oh, we can't play the second bridge, it's too expensive. I think we just play the spyglass. And we probably name Horizon Canopy here just to stop them from digging. Like, if. Yeah, so the, this phantasmal image is fairly scary. Because uh, if they company into a Knight of Autumn, then they get to copy Knight of Autumn.
Uh, so we're going to take like one hit from Thalia. And then be able to play the second bridge. I guess if we don't have a land on top, it might take more than one hit from Thalia. I guess we could play like Bobble for one and some other card. So we're going to need to find Tezzeret to make a blocker. Not like immediately, but relatively soon. Otherwise, like these Hierarch Beats will get us. Alright, so definitely getting pay. Pay for this Opal, pay for the Bobble. Get get below the amount of cards required for this Geist to attack. We're in kind of a tough place. Um, like, we really want our Turper Orb so that they can't destroy this bridge. Because, um, like, Collected Company plus Phantasmal Image is really scary. Um, but also, if we crack this bobble, we're not necessarily going to be able to cast the three cards we have in our hand. I guess it depends. If they hit a Knight of Autumn, we're just forced to crack our bobble. Alright, double drawing Skull Captain. Not a big deal. As weird as that sounds. And I actually just made a bunch of their spirits bigger, so... Cracking is now not the huge problem that it looked like before. Um, so this foundry is still active. We could, in theory, like kill Thalia here. Sacrifice, I guess we could sacrifice the opal. The opal is like the most expendable of these cards. It should be a 3 2. We can't attack with the hierarch in the face of these Thopter foundries. I guess with the Thopter foundry in play, I feel substantially safer. Yeah, yeah, two noble hierarchs. That's solid. I think we're going to take this four. What we really want is the Thopter Foundries to make enough Thopters to uh, kill a hierarch. And the way that we're going to do that... Stony Silence. Uh, that's a bummer. Okay. I was really hoping to be able to make like one Thopter and then equip the sword to it. So Stony Silence means that this Mox is really super not useful. And I guess we can sacrifice the Welding Jar. Alright, there's some chance that we'll like get Liliana in play. So we really want like Bottle Cloister here. Or Tezzeret. Tezzeret would be the best thing we can draw right now. You like Double Bridge better? On the previous turn, making the Thopters, I think, was the thing to do. Like, we had a Welding Jar as a layer of protection. When I sack my non-sword artifacts, I only sacked artifacts that were going to be turned off by Stony Silence, and I don't actually want to like. I don't want to lose the sword in the world where like I get Liliana, and get rid of these enchantments. When I played Bobble Opal. Um. So playing the second bridge would have allowed their. Geist of St. Traff to attack, which would have been a ton of damage, and I was trying to preserve my life total. 
so that um, like we're not just going to die incidentally to these noble hierarchs. So I think I can chump later when it matters more. And uh, when I think it matters more specifically is uh, if I play a Tezzeret and they're coming in to kill the Tezzeret. So we can just die to Knight of Autumn or Phantasmal Image, which is not a great place to be. Uh, Turper Orb. Turper Orb will... is half of what we need to not lose. So this guy's cracking for three. We'll take that. And Tezzeret's the other half of what we need to not lose. So that we can actually get a blocker that's big enough to deal with these th with these hierarchs. So you can see like how like Spellskite would have just been a, a radically better choice here. Uh, gave you. you still could have double spelled. Uh, I don't think so. I think Thalia was increasing the cost of the cards so that I did not have the option of double spelling. So I think we can go down to two. I don't think there's anything that they really do that's going to instantly increase the power of this noble hierarch. So I'm going to, I'm going to take this risk and just take the three here. Next turn we'll have to start jump blocking, so we have three draw steps to find answers to our current conundrum. doesn't really do anything for us. They're not cracking their lands, which is interesting. Oh, sure, so Misty Rainforest. I guess maybe we're supposed to name Mausoleum Wanderer so that if we draw a word, they can't counter it. Yeah, it seems more correct. Like, they can thin their deck a little bit with the uh, Rainforest. But, like, we, we need our words to be live here. Like, we need to be able to go and find Bottle and Cloister to increase our chances of drawing Tezzeret. Hey, uh, Lukita, there should be a Stream Decker link I don't know, either up top or on one of these sides to look at the deck list. And I'm really supposed to figure out how to integrate that. So we'll have to chump lock one of these hierarchs now. Man, a simple spell skate would have been. All we needed, I mean, they, they would eventually get another Hierarch, but we could have just absorbed a gajillion damage. And really, like, if they just played their Stony Silence one turn later, so we could have equipped up one of these Thopters. That would have great, too. Yeah, I think this deck is pretty sweet. I've been playing a bunch of variants of it for the last month and a half. Uh, I started as like a Grixis War deck, but I found I really just love Thopter Foundry. So I've been kind of experimenting with different variants. I really liked uh, some like Faithless Looting variants. All right, so we just have to draw exactly Tezzeret next turn. Um, 
But uh, today I've given up my beloved Faithful Sootings to play Chalice. Wow! Wow, 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 wow. On the last possible turn, Tezzeret. We have exactly five mana. Wow. How lucky. <laughs> Don't spell Queller me. Yeah! Wow. Yeah, 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 we made it. All right, sword. Your job is now fighting. So that's, you know, like, I think the spyglass on the canopy strongly contributed to that working out. Like, if they'd been two cards deeper in their deck, who knows? So now, right, they can attack with these hierarchs, but um, the sword's bigger. And they need to find uh, two Knights of Autumn and or um, Phantasmal Images to uh, get through our bridges. And we need to find our Turper Orb before they can find those. Uh, now, of course, they could draw their Spell Queller, at which point... Um, like, if they spell quill the Turfer Orb, it's pretty bad. So we'd much rather see uh, a Whir here than the Orb. But they didn't have spell quiller last turn, so we'd probably just, you know, go for it. Uh, we need to be careful about cards. Oh man, we we're probably actually supposed to minus one another artifact this turn. Do we want either of these? One, two, three, and one. No, I think we just want to empty our hand. Yeah. I mean, plusing lets us kill our opponent. So this is actually a tricky question. Right, like if we just plus again, we kill them in two turns by just ultimating them, because their life total's low. If we minus, we, you know, I, I think, right, plus is the right choice, because we can just kill them. Minusing plays, plays around them. Right, if they just Knight of Autumn us here and kill the sword, then they get to kill us. We take Opal to Thin. Uh, Tezzard puts the cards on the bottom. So like we're not going to see those cards again, and we we don't shuffle our deck, so we don't need to thin our deck. Um, and I, I'm pretty leery of like taking cards that we can then not cast, and like maybe turning our bridges off. So I think we're just supposed to plus one here. Like we could find our Turper Orb. Don't find it. Uh, we'll still take this mock since we can cast it. And we get to plus one the next turn, or minus four the next turn, if they don't kill us. So, either way, a pretty exciting game of magic. Uh, we only made it more exciting by probably sideboarding wrong. If we had sideboarded in uh, Spell Skite instead of Welding Jar. Yeah, I think we would have just been able to block these hierarchs and not been under that absurd pressure we were under. Oh wow, there's our were. Um, we could have been like conservative and tried to were first. Okay, so we did it. Woo! <laughs> that was close. That shuffles, I made a fatal error. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah, that was, that was about as tight as a match can get. Like just both living off the top of our decks, Drew Tezzer at like, the very last turn possible. Okay, so this hand... 
uh, double opal means that we can't do the awesome thing we'd be really excited to do here, which would be chalice for one on turn one. We could draw a land. Like, this isn't a bad hand. It's a very good bridge hand. Um, we get to, like, crack bobble, but then the opals don't do anything. Ironworks isn't really a card to go in our hand. We want it in our deck. Uh, I think this is a mulligan, but if anyone wants to, like... Quickly pitch keeping it. I'm prepared to listen. Uh, but I think, like, just one land and hoping to draw. Yeah, mull. Alright. We're mulling. Alright, this is awesome. Turn two, Turn two foundry with potential to war into sword or bridge, depending on what we need, is great. Uh. You know, I'm, I guess I'm new to evaluating Chalice in our deck, but there are some decks where Chalice is really good. Uh, Bobble is going to let us, like, whir for a higher value. So I think we actually want this Bobble. Tron. All right, so Tron, the Thopter Foundry is probably going to be too slow. And we're going to, chalicing for one is going to be good against them, and then we're we're going to want to use that were for damping sphere. Yeah, we definitely want chalice on one. Like, are they not playing a land? Ooh, oof. <laughs> uh, so they whiffed. That's super lucky for us. And th this chalice for one now is just going to. Uh, stop their basic draw engine. Like, they just want to cast all of these, like, spheres and stars and expedition map. And uh, this is about as, as dirty as it gets, is just turning that engine off completely for them. Um, when I first started playing and I had Chalices, I actually thought Tron was an amazing matchup. So usually I'd want to whir for Damping Sphere here. But they're stuck on one land and we have Chalice up. I think I might just want to like Foundry and... Or like whir for Sword and then Foundry next turn. And start going off. I mean, small going off. I guess we can see what they do and decide how to continue our approach here. Um... Obviously, if they get to Tron and they hit... Yeah, I think they're in such a bad position that I like usually I don't think it's right to go aggro. Like, I think usually we want to imprison them. But I think they're already kind of imprisoned. Like, we should be able to clean them up before they can get to anything meaningful. And, like, there's still more words in the deck, which we can use to find Damping Sphere. Yeah, it stops stirring. It's like, Chalice just stops everything for them. It's a nightmare card for Tron. I think it's also very good against KCI. Which is, I think, like, the reason to play Chalice. So we'll crack this bobble, it's not doing anything anymore, and we'd like to find more prison pieces, like Spyglass. Uh, we'll play the Ferris and so we'll gain his life. Yeah, so with, with the Spyglass, with the Inventor's Fair here, we're super safe. Like, if they play another Tron piece, we can just crack the Fair to get Damping Sphere. And if they do nothing, we can just keep making Thopters. Uh, yeah, I think if we picked up another Chalice, I'm not even sure if we cast another Chalice if we found it. Like, I think making Thopter, four Thopters is going to clock them enough that, like, we, get, we just don't need to shut them off those cards. Like, what I really care about is 
uh, Oblivion Stone at this point. Like even Karn, Karn doesn't do much. Uh, I would care about Ugin if they were getting close to Ugin. Here we'll just gladly pay the two life. Once we have these Thopters going, like, life means almost nothing to us. Man, you know they're sitting on a bunch of, like, stars, and, I mean, they discarded an expedition map. <laughs> the Chalice just did everything. That was fantastic. So we don't need Wishborn Orb. Uh, we don't need Ironworks. We're going to take out our Thopters and our Swords. We're just going to go to, like, a hard prison deck. Uh, basically, any time where you would use your words to get lock pieces instead of combo pieces, it means you want to take the combo out, because like just having a random sword or ironwork sitting around does nothing. I uh, want these Tezzerets. Uh, they're going to bring in a bunch of nature's claims, so we like having all these like welding jar type effects. And I theorize that Liliana would be good. I guess we can trim one bridge for Liliana. I'm even... Let's experiment. We're always trying to experiment more. Oh, I guess the, a revoker is better. Revoker. All right, people. Chat. We need to vote. We need to vote whether we want to keep in three ensnaring bridges, because they might bring in um, Thought Knot Seers, or like Thrag Tusks, or Tarmogoyfs. And like, they'll probably cut all their worm coils. Or they should bring in Liliana, because like Liliana also answers the Thought Knot Seers, but we can just go after their hand. He was keep two against Tron. We can split the difference and just play one Liliana. Um sure, let's let's do that. I usually keep three bridges. Like, I basically never want to have to spend one of my wars getting one, so I just want to draw a bridge naturally. Um, I think this is just going to be an incredibly good matchup post board. Like, all these welding jars might actually be overkill with the chalices. Like, we might not need all these nature's claims. That's interesting. I'm so used to having to answer all the nature's claims, but Chalice just turns them all off. Drawing second bridge seems terrible. That's true. I guess I'm used to having looting to like get rid of the second one. I can see that. I kind of want to cut one jar for another Liliana. Maybe I should cast one. I'll cut one spell sky for a second Liliana. Oh, but Spell Skate's better because it can hit their Exile effects. I'm going to cut one jar for Liliana. I think with the Chalices, this is a, a defensible position. Yeah, we got two Togs in here. A Tugatog and a Lukatog. Cut an Opal. No, the matchup's fast. Like, we're on the draw, and... Like, in theory, we would love to cast Unmoored Ego on turn two. Uh, we're not quite going to get there here, but... Uh, so this hand's pretty good. We have Chalice for two. Uh, we have a Spyglass that we can like start constructing a prison with. Uh, so even though Double Opal doesn't do much for us, like we'll just get to use one as a Lotus Petal at some point. This this has has all the all a bunch of the good stuff in it. Like, right, we could put this chalice on zero to cast Spyglass that turn, this turn. That doesn't help. That doesn't sound like a good plan. So they're representing having natural Tron here. Um, they probably don't have Worm Coil, so they probably just have Karn. Oh, haha! -ha! We luck out again. Uh, we can just cast this Damping Sphere, and that means that they won't be able to Tron us. Uh, so I think it's better than using Spyglass on Karn this turn. Um, and then we can Chalice for one this turn. Uh, 
Yeah, this is great. So we can chalice for one, turning off all sorts of cards, and then we can, oh, huh, we can't play anything else because of our own damping sphere, which is fine. Oh, I could have played Bobble for one. I should have played Bobble for one. I don't think it will matter. I think we have a pretty crushing advantage here. Yeah, I could have paid for the Bobble. I was just so surprised that I was like, ah. Um, so we care about Oblivion Stone. I can do that for three. But we can just use Spyglass to take care of that and also kind of get an idea of what's going on with their hand. Interesting, so they're still playing Worm Coil. Triple Sylvan Scrying, which they might have a really hard time casting. Um, so I guess I'll name Karn on this one. Does that seem like the right thing to name? No, they could still draw a stone. They're pretty far from casting it. Yeah, I'll name Karn. No, I'll name Stone. The plan is named Stone. You just always want to stop Oblivion Stone. It's very hard for things to go wrong from there. And I will cast this bauble this time. So we're going to need to whir for bridge unless we find one naturally. Ego Nature's Claims? Uh, we don't need to. We have Chalice, which will counter all of them. It's like so great, right? Uh, we'll crack this bauble. We have another Worm Coil Engine, so we're going to get double Worm Coil Engine when we hit their bridge. So we have Fair. So we can, if we jar, we can still cast Ego. Um. I think we might actually be so far ahead that we want to were for Bottled Cloister. We don't need to ego for anything yet. They're not close to having any mana. So we just want Bottled Cloister to start getting ourselves twice as many resources a turn. Do we ego Forest? Egoing Forest is kind of savage. Uh, I like that. Wow, wow. Alright, we're definitely getting cloister here. I I think I can be talked into naming forest. Do they have more than four forests? Uh probably not. They probably have like three. They top out at four. Uh, we could also Chalice for two. It turns off our own Spy Glasses. I don't like that as much. Uh, if Liliana Edicts, she dies, so we don't like that. Alright, let's see how many forests they have. Black, blue, one. This is cruel. I'm into it, but it's cruel. Uh, forest. Let's see what we win. One, two, three, four. Is that one, two, three? Oh, is it? So they had five. So they can still find their last forest, but all these scryings are off. They're going to surgically extract our egos. <laughs> yeah, this is nice. I mean, we play a prison deck, of course we're mean. Um, yeah, I think we're good there. So we still need to turn off this Walking Ballista. We can't just trade Liliana for it. Oh, we should have looked at their other things. I was so kind of giddy about the forest that it wasn't paying attention to the other win cons, but nothing left out of me is unusual for a Tron deck. Yeah, they have very few outs here. 
Uh, like, they can't draw lands, they can't get ones. Their Sylvan Scryings, like, they have one forest to find in their entire deck, which they could find, but they, they don't have any tutors for it that they can cast. So we have two words. So I think we were for bridge here. Blue, one, two, three. And snaring bridge. So that takes care of the worm coils in their hand. And this walking blista bashing us. So we could get another spyglass on ballista. We could Liliana to just edict the ballista. I kind of like putting a spyglass on it so that we can just use Liliana to clean up their hand. Oh, Revoker's even better. Revoke is like the perfect needle for walking ballista. And I can play a jar out. I guess playing the jar doesn't really do anything. So then we can just start plussing Liliana from here. Yeah. Uh, we couldn't cast Liliana because of the damping sphere. Oh no, they got a fourth land. <laughs> Alright, so Liliana, black, black, this. And then we'll plus her, we'll discard our excessive opal. Play this card. Just pass. And at this point, like we're just trying to draw into Tezzeret to close this out. Uh, we know that they have Corn at seven, so they have you know two more lands before they're there. They should probably blow this Ghost Quarter. Uh, I guess that's terrible for them. Like, if they blow the Ghost Quarter in the Inventor's Fair, it hurts us, but it hurts them so much more. I feel like if I was them, I would concede. It's just so hard for... Yeah, we're, we're for Spyglass and Karn is undoubtedly at our future. I think it's so inconceivable to a Tron player that they'd actually be like, hard locked out of the game. Blue, black... We have a... S we don't have a spell scout in play. But we have one in our deck, so I'm just gonna get Ulamog here. And... They have another walking ballista. That doesn't matter. World Breaker doesn't matter. They have an Emmer called the Promised End. Uh, Emmer called the Promised End might matter. They have three types, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They're, they're still super far from that. I guess. We can leave up Whir mana so that we can Whir on their turn. Yeah, screenshotting them is totally effective. Is there a chance for a one-off time sieve? Not really. Um, I think that time sieve is just worse than KCI most of the time. And even though it's cool, like there are situations where time sieve wins and... 
KCI doesn't. I think KCI is just so much cheaper mana-wise. Uh, I was supposed to war on their upkeep because of Cloister. Um, yeah, like I feel like if the metagame was like very heavily uh, like blue-white control decks. They're ghost courting themselves to find their only forest. <laughs> they did it. I... <laughs> That's awesome. Alright, so we got Tezzeret. And this guy's just going to close out the game for us. Oh, plus Tezzeret. So we'll pick up a spell skite. Play a spell skite. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, Chalice makes that matchup so much easier. Hmm. Hmm. Spyglass. Or not Spyglass. Chalice. Chalice. Spyglass is actually, like, I'm used to having Pithy Needles. Spyglass has a nice synergy with Egos. Like, I think ideally you want to Spyglass cards that are in their hand and then Ego cards that are out of their hand so that they don't get to, like, cycle cards and they just have a bunch of dead cards in their hand. It does make Liliana a little less good. Like, if you're stranding a bunch of cards in their hand, like, they just have kind of free discards. This hand on the play is probably fine. Like we need another artifact so that we can whir for X equals two on turn three. Uh, usually getting Thopter Foundry. But we have a lot of artifacts. On the draw, this hand might be too slow. Although I guess you get more steps to draw on artifact. So on the draw, this is fine, probably fine. Like. Uh, this is like, I think, low end of keep range. There are definitely times where you just get like run over keeping this hand on the draw. Like, Whir is definitely one of your best cards, but if you don't have enough, you know, CMC 2 or lower artifacts to go with it, it doesn't always come together for you. But we do have enough CMC 2 or less artifacts. And we're not playing against a deck where it matters. There are definitely a number of decks where playing your zeros out. Actually, this deck has counter magic. Like, it could is it charm these things. Or I guess, no, we're playing against Storm. I was thinking we were playing against Phoenix. So we want Damping Sphere here, so we definitely need to keep both of these artifacts in play. And... We'll just were for damping sphere while they're down. Yeah. You're not sold on Liliana? Yeah, I'm not sure that I'm sold on Liliana either. Um like it might actually just be worth playing red to have access to grid, since grid is just so good as an alternate win condition. Alright, so here's our damping sphere. Uh, Damping Sphere makes it very hard to storm off, even even with something like Brawl in play, reducing s casting costs, or even with both of these guys in play, they can't cast that many spells before it, it really adds up. Okay, so we have an Inventor's Fair, another Bauble. So the question is, do we want to whir for anything? I could whir for Bottled Cloister to start drawing more cards. We need two combo pieces to go off. But we have the Ironworks, so we could go off infinitely. Inventor's Fair can get us a piece, so I think we cast this Ironworks. Uh, 
oh, we can't cast Ironworks. So I think we're cloistering. Right, because I cast this bauble, which damping sphered me. Uh, I think if we'd gone for, if we cast the Ironworks, we could have gone for Foundry the next turn and use the Inventor's Fair to get Sword and gone infinite on them. I think here we'll cloister. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. I don't think they'll have a Zit Charm, but it's possible. Give some give it in response, sure. Because we oh we could have gotten Witchbane Orb here. They need to cast gifts before we can Witchbane Orb. We might need to Witchbane Orb. Yeah. Okay. So, Remand would let us them remand this war. Unsubstantiate lets them bounce our thing. Noxious Revival lets them put one of these cards on top of their deck. If we give them Empty the Warrens and Noxious Revival, they can still unsubstantiate anything. If we give them Empty the Warrens and Remand, they remand this, and then we can cast it again on our own turn. I think they only have the one unsubstantiate main, which means that if we get, I guess if we get Cloister but not Bridge, I think we have to give them Warrens and Remand. So put two in the graveyard. I think it's Revival and Unsubstantiate. Now they can Remand our spell. Oh no, they already cast a spell this turn. Oh, but they have a discount of two. Now they have to decide. Yeah. Remaining seems like the right choice. So we'll crack this. Serum Vision's on top. Right, so we have the Damping Sphere in play. It's pretty hard for them to just storm off. And the main thing we don't want is getting the Sphere unsubstantiated. Like, we have a lot of time as long as that Sphere's around. Uh, so here, if we play this opal, we can still pay for the ironworks. Yes, that's true. So I think I actually just want to play ironworks here. Because next turn, I believe we can work for Thopter Foundry and then sacrifice the Inventor's Fair to get Sword of the Meek, cast Sword of the Meek, and go infinite. Right, like we have an opal we can sack, a jar we can sack, a bauble we can sack. So that's like six extra mana. It's four to activate this. Um, is that not good enough? What? No, it's good enough. Drawing a land would be great on tap land. <laughs> or drawing a sword would be fine. Yeah, drawing swords, awesome. So I could cast sword now and then war on the opponent's turn for Thopter Foundry. That sounds good. We'll stop on their upkeep. I mean, like, we can pay any kind of is it charm type cost or like spell type pierce type cost with the ironworks. Yeah, this just seems really 
excellent for us. So they don't have any blue mana, so the, the time is now. Uh, improvise lets us pay for the Damping Sphere cost by just tapping our own artifacts. So, like, casting war on our own turn isn't even really a limitation. So we'll war for... Did I cut the Glimmer Voids? So, if I'm playing red for, like, looting... Yeah, there are no Glimmer Voids in this, and so we get this Thopter Foundry. I think it's entirely possible that we just want to play Glimmer Void in this build and have access to red mana so that we can play Grid in the sideboard instead of Liliana in the sideboard. So we have Infinite here at instant speed. Yeah, our opponent. Out of answers. I think I think if we had split that gifts and given wrong, we would have lost. So what do we cut here? I think this is another match where the Thopter Foundry combo is too slow. We just want to become a prison deck. Bring in Liliana's and Unmorty Egos. Spyglass does nothing against these people. We'll bring in a cage in case they're still going to the graveyard. We want all these spell skites to deal with bounce effects. Cage. Yeah, we got cage. I think this is I think this is the configuration we want. Anything else I'm missing? We have the sphere. We have cloister to combo with the ensnaring bridge against goblins. Witchbane orb. Yeah, this all looks good. So yeah, the, um, I mean, I think Chalice is really good in this match. Um, the Opal's going to turn on, so we just need to draw a black source for Liliana. I think this is fine. We have like Welding Jar to protect the Chalice if they want to abrade it. Right, so people say Chalice and two is good, but obviously we wanted Chalice and one first since a bunch of our lock pieces cost two. Spellscape will help protect that. Let me get, get the jar and the opal in play. I guess I should have waited on the opal because like they might try and counter it, and then we have a backup opal. So they're tapped out, which is great. So we can chalice on one. And now we can use we can use both opals to get Liliana into play. Like we can tap one for black, play the other one, tap it for black, and then play her. They still are going full on graveyard, or at least have access to full on graveyard. I guess gifts isn't even a graveyard thing. You think that's game? It's probably game. So we put past in flames and ritual in their graveyard. Oh no, mana more. Uh, I guess these are all. This is like plus two mana. This is plus one mana in a card. We just want to choke them on mana at this point. Right, so they get plus two mana and plus one mana is four mana. And this only costs four. So they get to flashback everything in their graveyard. I think they're there. I think they're there. I mean, 
can still make them perform the operations. Like, they don't have a win condition here. Flashing back to, I guess they get to flashback gifts ungiven. Yeah, there's no way they don't have it. Yeah, okay. All right, all right. They got this. Uh, still happy with this configuration, yes. So a couple times we've been short on the double black for Liliana. So we have Cage. Is Cage good enough disruption on its own? Cage seems pretty weak, but it is good. I think we probably keep this Cage plus cards. I'm curious if anyone else has opinions on like whether we should ship or maul this. Like I think Cage is a good piece of disruption, and we just have to expect to like pull something reasonable off the top of our deck. try it. Like, Spellscape is also a pretty important piece of locking them down. Right, they, they could still have completely, like, fair draws that just storm out. So we'll play this, we'll play the cage. Like, it takes them a couple turns to get to those draws. But Spellscape does stop them from, like, echoing truthing or... Well, I guess just echoing true thing are our lock pieces. So there we go. Found what we're looking for off the top of our deck. We can more for damping sphere here. Which makes it so that they can't really storm effectively. Like, Manamorphose becomes a, basically like a mana negative spell. And then, you know, we'll need something like Liliana to eat up their hand, or Tezzeret to start searching for more lock pieces. Blue, 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 one, two. Yeah, I missed a blue somewhere. Oh no, okay. That's bad. Uh, I just added River of Tears and I forgot the uh, most important rule of River of Tears. We can let them cast a spell first, I guess. First important rule of River of Tears is, of course, never talk about River of Tears. Oh man, do we even cast it here? Like, they haven't done anything. They could have counter magic up. I think we just wait. Second rule is to replace it with Glimmer Void. The second rule might be to replace it with Glimmer Void. We're not going to pay. So, right, they, they have to commit some mana, and I think waiting for them to make that commitment is better than just throwing out or naked. Like, if we have... I guess we, sh we should have looked at our own hand to see if we had a disruption piece coming to know whether we want to, like, spend our war mana now. All right, double war. Can't cast both of them this turn. This River of Tears doesn't stop me from having triple blue. So we will try and go off on their turn. Yeah, EOT on their turn, and then we can main phase on our turn if they counter it. And even if they don't counter it, well, we're on our own turn for some other piece. So yeah, if we'd mission bobbled ourselves, we would have played that better. Uh, I find with this deck like self-information is often a lot better than um, opponent information. 
All right, so there's pieces of the puzzle. We'll cast this here so that like, they might find counter magic with this. Uh, we're going to keep this bubble up. And we'll just obscure how much we're worrying for. All right, they do have the negate, so we'll, we'll get them on our turn. Ritual on the on the top. Snaring bridge and opal. So we'll cast the opal. Right, we don't have one right now. And we can get our bridge out also. And then we can whir. One, two. Whir for two to get sphere. So now we have several layers of protection for the bridge, um, or for the uh, the sphere. The bridge is only like semi reliable because they can have wipe away as long as we only have one bridge. It actually doesn't even matter how many bridges you have. If you have two bridges and they wipe one away, you have one card in hand and all their goblins can attack. So they have more goblins than you have life. Like the bridge is on the weak side. Um, yeah, wipe away is frustrating. I mean, that's why they play it. It's it's kind of like the best interactive spell for this style of combo deck. It's very played in like Legacy and I think even Vintage. So their their plan is almost certainly like wipe away your damping sphere, go off three, four, five, six. So we could chalice for X equals three. It would get rid of our own Liliana's, but it would turn off Wipe Away. Um, but they also have just a bunch of ones, and we can chalice for chalice for one, and then they just can't keep digging. Chalice for two. Also stops quite a few things, but yeah, if we chalice for three. They still have like a braid and echoing truth. But I think turning off the wipe away is just better. Yeah, let's do it. Of course, they could have a like an is it charm type counter spell. Uh, this just seems good. Like I kind of want to see what the experience is with Chalice, so this is even like more interesting to me. I mean, like, we're turning off more copies of pieces of the puzzle. They probably only have one more copy. But I guess, I think we only brought in, like, one Liliana. Maybe we brought in two. Oh, we also brought in Onward Ego. What was that? That was the wipe away. Okay, actually, I super don't like this line. Uh, I forgot the, the fact that we brought in a set of Unmoored Egos, so this Chalice is terrible for us. I think we should have Chalice for one. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fine. This is why, you know, you play with new configurations to figure out what they mean for you. So that was their one wipe away. And they, they're just like, they have to try and go off this turn. Because if we cast the sphere again, I think they know that they're just pretty locked from there. Uh, their graveyard is still offline, so that's a limitation. But if they make a bunch of goblins, they can do the Echoing Truth thing and be able to attack with them. And I believe they have two copies of Echoing Truth, so they could conceivably like get in two turns of attacks with the with the goblins. Grape shot. 
unsubstantiated. Oh man, yeah, they've got. Oh, they're unsubstantiating their own spell, so they can cast it twice. Oh, we, we, oh, we could have redirected the unsubstantiate to the spell sky, which we should have done. That's fascinating. I was like, it's targeting a spell. I guess we can't really do anything about it, but we could totally have done something about it. Right, like we could have stopped all of this like second wave of damage by re redirecting the unsubstantiated. Yeah, so uh, I think they're putting us at one though. Unless I'm miscounting. Yeah. So we should have redirected the unsubstantiate, but this is probably fine. I guess they could. Yeah, they can't just draw a grape shot again because we have the spell sky. <laughs> well, folks, we haven't made all the smartest choices today, but we've definitely been the luckiest today. And, I don't know, it's not even necessarily important to be smart or lucky today. Like, really, our goal is just to, like, test cards and learn about how they work. Um, I'm still feeling like we're going to die to an Echoing Truth. Uh, still feeling like we're going to die to an Echoing Truth. Oh, we can't cast this bridge, fine. We still wanted to cast the bridge just to keep our hand empty. Thing in the ice. So, little known fact, Spellskate is a horror. So, them flipping that thing in the ice is not going to do anything. Oh, did they cut all of their ones? I guess we still see opt-in serum visions. I was wondering if maybe they cut what, all of their 1 CMC spells in response to seeing chalices. So they might be thinking that they can cast 4 spells, flip their thing in the ice, return spell sky to our hand, and then attack through. Not true. But what would get us is if they, like, Echoing Truth the Spell Sky. And then flip their thing in the ice. No, then it just can't attack as a bridge. Yeah, I think we're in good shape. Wait, Fitch, you say we can't redirect the dance to Spell Sky. Why do you say that? So we can give them, well, we don't want to give them Empty Thorns, so that's definitely going in the graveyard. And I think Serum Visions gives them the most card selection, so we'll take that one away also. Metamorphos helps them flip their thing faster, but I don't think flipping thing is what's going to decide this. I can truth on bridge, we can redirect to spell skite, but then we still have the spell skite in our hand. So if they have empty the Warren's tokens, we die. So if we hadn't chaliced ourselves, I think we'd be in really great shape. Uh, as it is, I think we're still in good shape. Like, they have... They need to find both of their Echoing Truths. I guess the second Spell Skite doesn't help. 
second spell skate is actually kind of a liability against Echoing Truth. Because now they can bounce both of them and then the Electromancer can get through. And we don't have a sack outlet. It's possible keeping like one Foundry or one Ironworks post board to sacrifice spell skates to you might actually be an important part of this matchup. Alright, but we found Liliana, who is also going to get countered. <laughs> like, Liliana here otherwise would have been able to start hacking apart their hand or edicting their guys. Yeah, 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 I think, I mean, I think we just didn't think about the fact that we had relevant cards. And I think, yeah, that's fine. So we're still looking for one of our Tezzerets. Uh, we could, like, war for Bottled Cloister to start drawing towards Tezzeret faster. You know, I think what we learned, though, is, like, this matchup felt good, uh, you know, if we didn't Chalice, we're sure we would have won this game, and if we lose, we get, like, another game to test, so I don't think there's anything, anything bad has happened here. Like, it's actually, right, net positive that we tried naming Chalice, we're putting Chalice on three, and saw the consequences. Right, so try and attack the Draft Jigger's Cage. We're going to redirect to Spell Sky because we only want one Spell Sky in our hand. I guess now that they have Brawl, it probably doesn't matter much. But, you know, I, I like getting to not be blown out by Echoing Truth as much. Uh, this matchup was pretty good with the previous version of this deck. You could lose sometimes. They're dispelling their own uh, abraid. Makes sense. They get to, you know, cycle this card with Varal. And they've got to have an Echoing Truth. Like, they've just got to be so close to it at this point. Right? Like, we've only seen half of our deck, so, like, we probably should have seen Tez by now, but they're basically all the way through their deck and it's ridiculous that they haven't seen. I think they usually have two Echoing Truths. Maybe if they're only playing one. Alright, what do you got next? Shivan Reef. Show me Tezzeret. Or Bottled Cloister, I guess. Third spell sky. <laughs> I mean, these spell skates are fine. It's just like they happen to lose to the one card we care about. I guess we could even find a Chalice of the Void and cast it for X equals two and. That would also be a winning card in this position. Yeah, Chalice would be fine. We still have, I think, three of them left. And at the point where we can't get Echoing Truth, like, I think we also just win the game. So we, we have a lot of live draws here. Even under the Chalice at three regime. All right, there's the Echoing Truth. Wait, wait, wait. You can't say that you're not loving Chalice in this deck if, from that match. Like, if we named the right thing, Chalice would have been really good. Like, I mean, are you, like, looking at other matchups and saying, like, Chalice isn't good, or is it just, like, this one thing?
Sure. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't think you were about to be like, table flip, I hate chalice, I'm out of here. Um, I mean, the thing, I, yeah, like, I like chalice. I just don't like not having the deck manipulation from looting. Yeah, we lost. Um, but like, if the problem is not having enough deck manipulation and Chalice is really good, we can play like a two or higher CMC card that lets us manipulate our deck. So if they thought sees us here, they're gonna be very sad that we have two foundries. And you just take like Spyglass instead at this point. Otherwise, they're like, we'll Spyglass through Liliana. So, yeah, like, so Chalice isn't necessarily awesome in the meta, but this deck is very good in the meta. The worst two matchups for this deck are KCI and Tron, which both are, like, super dependent on, like, Ancient Stirrings and a bunch of eggs. So, like, and Chalice is nuts against both of them. So the question is, like, and then, like, I think... A matchup that I feel like is slightly disadvantaged is Death Shadow, like four color Death Shadow. So like Chalice helps all of your worst matchups, and not just a little, like I think a lot. And in exchange, you're losing some percentage in other matchups. Like it could be a good trade. Fitch says, I also think the one man of Pith and Needles and one man of Shredders kept the curve low and allowed a faster war. That's definitely true. Like, we could consistently war faster without... Um, Chalice in the deck. And, like, looting also lets you bridge faster, which is, you know, definitely a thing. You're, you're definitely trading away percentage in the I need a fast bridge matchups uh, in exchange for percentage in your worst matchups. And I think it's just an assessment of what metagame you're expecting. Like online, I'm not sure that I'd play the Chalice version because KCI is so rare. But like in paper, there's a lot of KCI. And like KCI is so good. Right, so we're going to cast the sword. Uh, if this is just like Jund, this is tremendously, yeah, difficult for them. Uh, we could sacrifice the Thopter Foundry to get a Thopter, but uh, getting a land I think is just better here. So we'll get one of our islands. You just really like that version? Yeah, like, I mean, that version I think is pretty sweet, the Shredder version. I, I mean, like, the Shredder version is still a little bit slower than the, um, the version with just baubles, but I think it's better against, like, the grindy decks. So double bolt, Goyf, we can't really do anything about the Goyf. I don't think we really care about a Wooded Foothills going off. I think we're just supposed to name Liliana here. Yeah. I guess we have a bottled cloister, Liliana. And yeah, I think we're still supposed to name Liliana. Liliana of the Veil. Right, like she they could conceivably top deck Liliana and make us lose our cloister. And the cloister's gonna find us either a bridge or another Thopter foundry to get out of the situation. So there's Tarmogoyf. We'll crack this bobble. Right, we're just, we want to dig for the right permanent. Colgan's command on top. Man. So if we play this Water Grave untapped, it might make them suspicious. We play it tapped, and they're probably going to play like Tarmogoy for Dark Confidant next turn and not have mana up for Colgan's Command. So 
think we play this tap to allay their suspicions. And we'll work for a Thopter Foundry. Cloister's so good. You're watching my older videos before I added Cloister. Yeah. There was like there was a day where I was streaming and I think like twice I had bridge and like two words or like a word in hand, but didn't have cloister as an option. And you know, things just went predictably bad. Alright, so they're hitting us with the goif. Are they actually just going to hold up Colgan's command? Nah. Yeah, Confidant. Hold up Bolt, that makes a ton of sense. Alright, so we get to Whirr. Oh, that doesn't help. Whirr for two. Maybe I was supposed to take away their third land with the Spyglass. I shouldn't underestimate the value of land destruction. Oh, you shuffled it away. Ha. Ah, thank you. I feel like uh, in paper I'm very good at tracking all the zones. In digital sometimes it's a bit of a trick. You're also running Serum Visions, which didn't decrease your hand size. Yeah, Serum Visions was much worse. Like, I would never play Serum Visions again. I feel like if I didn't want to play red for looting, uh, I would want to play blue and play Chalice and Ideas Unbound. Alright, Opal's a really nice pickup. So we have the choice, we can either cast this Bottled Cloister, oh I guess we should just cast this Bottled Cloister, like we're not in fear of this Colgan's Command, and we're still going to get two Thopters. Like, we're just creating multiple uh, threats that they have to process. So now they have to deal with the Bottled Cloister and the Thopter Foundry and some Thopters. And there's nothing in hand. So, like, we've made all of their Thought Seizes dead draws. And, like, right, they only have, like, really one useful mode of Colgan's Command. So they have the trophy, and this is tough, right? Like if they trophy the foundry, we get another land, and like cloister can just draw us into more foundries. If they kill the cloister, they're just getting killed by thopters. So I think they need to assassins trophy the thopter foundry here. Uh, we don't care about our life total at this juncture. We're much more excited about putting pressure on them and using the Foundry to gain life. Like, also the Tarmogoyf will be bigger next turn, so like if we want to chump lock, it's often better to wait. So here comes the trophy. We love another land. Okay. Scavenge Goose is one of their better cards against us because it does shut down the sword. I'm almost surprised that they... Let's see, are there any creatures in the graveyard? There are zero creatures in the graveyard, so this is just a 2-2 two -two and a 2-1. I think... So we could attack for 3, they would attack for 7. It sounds like a bad race for us. We can attack for one. And then block either of these guys. That sounds okay. So I think I'll just get in here with one Thopter. Oh, we know they have a second Lightning Bolt. I think I just want to attack. I don't think I can win any race here. Loverboy B, hello, how's it going? Uh, we can't make any guys, we don't have a Foundry. They blew up the foundry with the Assassin's Trophy. Otherwise, yes, I love that line of play. Uh, I 
we'll trade for their confidant here, even though he's taking them down. I think our, our ways of winning involve getting an active sword again or a bridge. And their way of winning through that is drawing more cards than us so that they have their Assassin's Trophy and, and Colgan's commands. Is there seven? So in theory, we have like two draw steps. Uh, but this Goyf doesn't have a Planeswalker. Yeah, we're probably pretty safe. I mean, they could have a burn spell, but I think I think we get to draw four total cards before we're like dead. We only have one Foundry left, so I mean, we'll obviously work for Foundry and make a bunch of tokens. But in the world in which they answered the last Foundry, I'm not sure if we can win on decking. We have a Cloister in play, which will deck us. Uh, do you have Academy Runes in the deck? Not relevant now with Ooze, but in general. Uh, no, I've tried Academy Runes in the deck. And I've just found I like Adventurous Fair a lot more. Like, uh, Runes is good in the attrition -y matchups, like against like Blue-White Control and against this deck that we're playing against. But there aren't very many like fair interactive decks. Like, I think decks like Dredge are kind of like pushing them out of the format. Um, whereas, like, a lot of times you need an artifact that you haven't seen yet. So, um, and it's really expensive to play colorless sources in the deck because you need to be able to cast War of Invention uh, very reliably. So right now I'm running, let's see, 18 colored sources of land and four moxes and then two inventor's fairs. I think it's possible to experiment with like trimming a colored source or a mox to play. Oh, that's bad news. Um, to play Academy Runes. But um, I guess so far my intuition is that's not where I want to be. Alright. Like Hulgan's command finally shows up. Do you have any graveyard recursion in this deck? Like, Buried Rune doesn't matter with Scoos. Uh, aside from the Sword of the Meek, Thopter Foundry combo, that's that's it for graveyard recursion. It often means, like, we sideboard away from it, and then people, like, over-target our sideboard, or our graveyard. So here, I want more Spell Skites because they're trying to attack our artifacts. Spike Glass is, like, good. Uh, they're not really attacking our hand very much. Um, like by the time we can cast Witchbane Orb, they've usually cast all these relevant cards. We don't need Ironworks to go infinite. Like it's usually just enough to have Thopter Foundry up. Is Chalice good against them? Not really. They have like Lightning Bolt. I guess on the play we can like, but they're like Thoughtseize on turn one. I think Chalice isn't very good in this matchup. Tessert's very good in this matchup. Uh, we could Ego on Trophy. That's something we've done in the past. Um, but this this deck has like Trophy and Colgan's Command, so we're not really sure which one we're going to get. It does cut in half the number of, you know, Shatter effects they have. I, I would choose Colgan's Command before I chose Assassin's Trophy. Um, we could probably cut one Spyglass and go down to three. I think that they have like very few threats and like Liliana is probably better. Although I guess we want to Spyglass Liliana, so maybe Liliana is not better. Maybe we should play some Egos. What do you think of this configuration chat? I think... I think this is probably fine. It might be that trimming a spyglass is wrong because Liliana is just so important. Alright, we'll, we'll battle this way. It might be that we should only have like one ego and all four spyglasses. 
right? Like, because we want to name two things, so like drawing two spy glasses is super welcome. And they could also just thought seize one out of our hand. Uh, and basically, if my hand's not terrible, I never mulligan against a deck like this. I just don't want to like lose cards against them. So we drew an opal, we could just jam Tezzer it out. Should be okay. We'll play this welding jar. It's pretty sweet if they assassin's trophy your spell skite and you regenerate it with welding jar, you still get the land and get to keep the spell skite. And we do have some risk here. If they if they just play Liliana, they can edict our spell skite out. Um, you know, if we had a third blue source, you can see already like even the the two inventors fairs as colorless sources aren't aren't without cost. Like instead of casting bridge there, we could have held up Whirr. And if they Liliana here, we could have gone and gotten a spyglass. But because it's a colorless source. Uh, we're just down a spell sky. I think we probably are just supposed to play all four of the spy glasses post board. But here, we'll pay two life. We'll play Tezra. And I guess we want to get aggro with the. Oh, we can't get aggro with the bridge. Right. So we'll just plus one. I guess we have a Thopter Foundry. Yeah, Foundry's pretty good. We can't, yeah, I was thinking we'd jar beat down, but we have a bridge in play. Uh, it's possible that playing bridge is a mistake there for exactly this reason. Um, I'm going to discard the Spell Skite here. Like, I love Spell Skite, but. It's pretty weak with a Liliana on the board. And us not having a like a needle on Liliana. Obviously we can whir for it, but we don't have enough mana to like spell skite and whir. Whereas like Thopter Foundry is often like a standalone win condition. Spellskite does like protect Tezzeret from Assassin's Trophy. So like, you know, there is some argument for trying to like fight hard over Spellskite. Right, so opponent agrees that Thopter Foundry is the best thing. If they have a surgical extraction, they should use it now to get rid of the foundries before we can war for one, another one. Hogan's command. So two damage, make us discard our last card. Sure, we don't have a spell skate, so we can't do anything about that. And we'll plus. Uh, I think Spyglass is the clear winner here since we can turn off their Liliana. Yeah, so a little too bad that we don't have a spell skite, but we would have discarded everything we had anyway. Liliana of the Veil. All right, so we're going to lose our Tezzeret to Lightning Bolt. It's still like a three for one. Uh, this bridge is going to hold. Uh, we have an Inventor's Fair, which we can use to go get Bald Cloister to start pulling ahead. Oh, or we can just whir for it. So we'll give our opponent the chance to try and, like, Thought Seize us before we whir for the Bald Cloister.
blue, 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 one, two, three, four. Yeah, and it turns off all their discard effects, which is nice. Like, uh, that, that's the other reason that you, like, cut Witchbane Orb in this matchup, is Cloister does everything that Witchbane Orb does, and then some. Right, so we're taking up in life, which is the right direction, and we're, we're starting to outcard them with a, uh, thanks for the follow effort, Gazak. Um... So we can fare here, and then we're for Thopter Foundry. And with a Welding Jar on the table, this is pretty pretty inexorable. I mean, we, we have the Inventor's Fair, so we can even like replace it. Yeah. All the attrition engines. I'm going to put the fourth spyglass back in and trim an ego. Like, the egos are fine, but not amazing here. And I think that's good. What other decks do I play? Um, <laughs> I mean, in modern, I've been just playing all of these variants. I, um, I really like building decks, so the other thing I'm interested in modern right now is there's an affinity build with um, friends, is it Experimental Frenzy? So like Frenzy lets you play all of your affinity for artifacts guys off the top for zero mana. And uh, I like that. Uh, I haven't really played much standard. Um, and I, like, I have a huge pile of modern constructed decks. Hang on a sec. Uh, so do we want to keep this? Yeah, we probably do. Also, we don't like mulliganing. Um, what did I play in modern before I played this deck? I guess I haven't really played modern for four years. Like, this deck kind of got me back into the format. Like, I built Dredge. Um, it felt like Dredge was like too slow and actually like not that consistent. I uh, read it, like back when they unbanned Golgari Grave Troll, I built a version of Dredge which was pretty sweet. But that is way past being legal. I don't want to crack this bauble because I want uh, Opal to make mana for Tezzeret. And the sword right now doesn't do anything. Fulminator Mage. Let's see, so if they Liliana us, we can just discard Sword of the Meek. If they Fulminator Mage us, we're not getting to Tezzard anytime soon, so I think we're going to go for Fulminator Mage. And then just throw out another Bobble. Um, I mean, the most famous deck I ever built uh, was for Pro Tour Dragon's Maze. It was a uh, block constructed, Return to Ravnica, I mean, in Dragon's Maze. And uh, I built a super sweet green white, um, kind of like instant speed token deck. So, uh, like, the key card was, what was it called? Uh, root board defenses. It was uh, like an instant for white and two. Where uh, you could also proliferate, and it made all of your guys indestructible. And Craig Wesco won the Pro Tour with that one. I have a name Sorcerer Spyglass once today. So I think Sorcerer Spyglass lets me look at their hand, and then I'm excited about the right card in their hand. I think I'm almost never going to name Sorcerer Spyglass to Sorcerer Spyglass. So, I'll see what they have going on. And I need to save this other bauble so that the opal makes mana. This, 
this is a pretty tough spot. Uh, I think we cast Tezzeret here. The Bottled Cloister obviously like protects the rest of the cards in our hand, but if it gets destroyed, we lose all the cards in our hand. And since we have a Sword of the Meat to like as kind of like a free discard, I think we can go for this bridge. Even though like having yet another Sword of the Meat to discard might be fun. Uh, super sweet Dragon's Maze deck. Yeah. Um, so it was awesome. You had like 12 different ways to make tokens, including like Advent of the Worm. So like you could you, you could make some serious tokens. And like proliferating them was good. Everyone was playing like Supreme Verdict as a control card and uh, right, we had like experiment one which could resist uh, being destroyed. We had um, that like green white guy that when he dies he makes a token that's like XX equal to your creatures. We had Selesnia Charm, and like you know, it's usually blue decks that play at instant speed, but this was a just a green white deck that played at instant speed. So Dark Conrad's about to crack Tezzeret. Uh, we could have Tezzeret minus and kill their Liliana. Uh, oh no no no! Uh, Trojan, I uh, or K Trojan. I didn't take that as sarcastic at all. You sounded like very serious that it was a sweet deck. Uh, I, I think the lol at the end made it. So they're extracting our bridges. Alright. So we need a 5-5. Five, five. And I think we want to attack Liliana, and then they have to block with Tarmogoyf. And then they are going to Edict us. Oh uh, no, with the Surgical Extraction, Tarmogoyf's too big. Alright, so I think... Do we plus and just get like one last card out of Tez? Or do you want to stop this confidant from attacking? I think we plus. If we can find Thopter Foundry, we're in really good shape. Did it. We could get the Spyglass, but Thopter Foundry just seems better. Um, so we'll play this. Resolved. We'll sacrifice this bauble to get our swords back. That's resolving. So we could keep the land for the discard, but the land also represents getting two Thopters. And that like that's that means Tezzeret lives. I guess we, we have no idea like whether they have any artifact destruction effects because we, we haven't seen whether or not they care. But like we're talking about losing one and then four next turn to try and bottle cloister. It's a lot of Thopters. I think it's better to pay the life here and like get more Thopters. Uh, three five isn't a special size here, so we'll break it. Sometimes like having both of the swords on the same Thopter is a big deal. But given what our opponent has, it doesn't look that good. Having two swords in play is awesome. It means that we don't have to play around another surgical extraction. Um, because we still have one on the table. So they got our ball of cloister. I think that's fine. I think five thopters is a good deal. Like this way, like we also saved Tezzeret through some amount of removal. Definitely chump. Do you still talk to Craig? Yeah, we talk every so often. Um, 
like Craig is a person who uh, definitely like has gratitude for people who have helped him and you know he he thinks I you know I, I did one of the great services he's had in his life uh, we're gonna take this jar to protect our Thopter foundry and so he pretty much like takes any excuse he can to help me out since you know I built a sweet deck for him our opponents at 13, uh, we clearly need to stop Liliana from ultimating. Uh, we basically have unlimited Thopters available to us. Why is it that card naming Snapcaster Mage? I don't think I named Snapcaster Mage with anything. It's naming Fulminator Mage uh, because they have a, or they had a Fulminator Mage in their hand. And uh, we didn't want the Fulminator Mage to stop us from making our land drops. You feel so right? So Loverboy B says, I feel so bad right now. I'm build Golgari Infect Tron for Popper. Um, I don't know enough about Popper to know whether that's uh, like a sweet deck or a deck that you should feel so bad about. Um, Okay, uh, so with this, like, Tezzeret's actually just in the position to burn them out. So they're, they have extra incentive to kill him beyond the fact that he's just drawing us extra cards. Uh, we're able to apply enough of pressure here that I don't think there's any reason to try and, like, keep their Dark Confidants alive. Like, sometimes Dark Confidant is our win condition, but uh, here I think we're much more likely to win through attrition. So, like, the Confidant's... So there's the Assassin's Trophy. We'll Wielding Jar to protect the Foundry. And then we'll get an untapped land, so we'll actually get to make extra Thopters now. All right, so we won the match. Pretty sweet. Uh, probably if we hadn't uh, chaliced for three against Storm uh, and blocked all our own unward egos, we would have probably gone 5-0. Um, and in fact, it's just a feel bad mechanic. I mean, in fact, it's just like double strike. And there are so certainly like some super cheap guys. But um, with in fact, I don't think it's like unfair. It just requires that someone has to think about how to be in fact. Like obviously, uh, I love Spellskite in this format, not legal and popper, but so you guys think we should cut Liliana for the next run and play some other win condition? Like maybe we should just turn the River of Tears into Glimmer Voids, since Glimmer Void was basically always awesome. I mean, I don't know that River of Tears is bad. It might be better than Underground River. But I like the idea of getting Glimmer Voids in here and going back to um, Grids. Like, Grid just seems like it fixes all of, like, Gaddock Teague and Kataki vulnerabilities. I don't want to... T t trash for Treasure? What is that? Trash for Treasure. Uh, as an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice an artifact, return target artifact card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Um, interesting. I'll think about that. That's interesting. Yeah, I feel like uh, playing Academy Ruins or even like Reshape might be better choices. Anyway, um, I see it's 2.46, which means that I should probably eat some lunch. And I think we're going to go get a, a tree to hang a bunch of things on. Uh, thank you to all the new viewers. Uh, I think I got a bunch of subscribers early in the morning, but uh, this is what I do most days. If you have like an Amazon Prime or you're even willing to spend five bucks a month, it goes a long way to supporting me doing this. I will be back uh, tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. PST, uh, probably with more of this deck. And, uh...
yeah, let's 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 find someone to raid. What do we got? We're going to look for someone else who's playing, you know, modern constructed since Magic the Gathering. Uh, do I have any UMA cube drafts into fire? Yeah. Uh, Fitch says, after I start my new job in January, I'll sub. Thanks, Fitch. I, I really appreciate that. And magic. Let's see. Anyone with modern going on? New deck for Twitch Rivals, Sean McLaren. Sean might be playing Modern. What's he got going on here? An ad. Yeah, I guess um, I have Twitch Prime, and I think they, uh, they made it so Twitch Prime people don't get to skip ads anymore. Uh, standard, not standard, boom, uh, there's a standard streamer tomorrow that everyone is prepping for, I see, I guess since I'm not streaming standard, I don't get to play in the standard streamer tournament, all right, this looks like UMA. Vintage Turbo Xerox? Sure, close enough. Yama Killer. 10k, that's pretty good. Maybe I should look into it. I don't know, is it invite only? Right, Yama Killer. Uh, I think it might be invite. Yeah, I, I probably, since I've only been streaming for a couple months, they might not be eligible at this point. But here we go. Raids, see you guys tomorrow.